ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, let me speak on this. Orale! <laughs> hey, yo, what's going on, everybody? Tonight, we're kicking it old school style, man. We got the two, two of the biggest factions in the history of wrestling, the NWO and D Generation X. We're going to battle it out. Who versus who? Who's the better? Who's the most influential? Who who are the kids copying nowadays? Who do we idolize growing up? Who, what faction did we want to be in? And one of my favorites, if the roles were reversed, would they have succeeded? Would NWO have succeeded if it was a WWE idea back in that day, back in the day? And if DX was in WCW, that's something to think about right there, because those are two totally different groups. But like always, we got my main man Lay in the building. Your host with the most. First serve. That's it. That's it. Always the first one here and the last one gone. <laughs> you know, that's how we do it, baby. The the host with the most toe tags. You know, we got show is on his way and GG is on her way. You know, they they they, they ride in style. They're part of the full horsemen, apparently. You know, the limousine riding, <laughs> jet flying horse, kiss stealing, wheeling dealing, sons of guns, I guess. You know, my man show gets in the Tesla, and all of a sudden he, you know, just know that. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. Just familiar all of a sudden. Word. He gets hit by one person, and he think he Pancho Villa and shit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, yo, uh, the big news, big news yeah. was it yesterday, yesterday, today. No, today. Oh, today, yeah. Hey, literally today. Yeah, Jeff Hardy what? has been released from the WWE. Yes. How do you, know, you feel about that, Lay? It's crazy because um, apparently the whole backstory is that was, everybody saw the clip most likely that he was sluggish in the ring or whatever. And then they apparently um, told, they probably offered rehab for him to do. And he said no. So that right there just pretty much set up the release. They were like, well, so you're going to go to rehab. You, 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 gotta go. you know what's crazy? I was I was thinking in my head, I was like, yo, there's two ways you could look at it. Because a lot of people are like, yo, we love you, Jeff Hardy, blah, 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 you know, whatever. But I was thinking like, yo, imagine if every time you slipped up or every time you did something that was like, uh, it was, you got to go to rehab. And you know, at one point, you were like, yo, I'm not fucking going to rehab. Like, yo, I just drank. You know what I'm saying? But then again, you have to realize, yo, this is like, what, the fourth or fifth time? He's done something with another substance that, that could have been bad. And he did something that was bad. Like, he burnt down Matt Hardy's house because he was high. You know, and killed, and killed his dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that's dangerous. He, he, yo, he came into the, the main event at Impact with Sting high as fuck. I remember I, remember I was watching that, and I was oh, like, yeah. the fuck? I was like, oh, he's done. Yeah. You know, so it's like, at one point, at what point do you, you know, accept responsibility for what you do? Mm -hmm. You know, because I get mm -hmm. it. it. It's a pain in the ass. Like every time you do something, you gotta go to rehab. You know, mm -hmm. it's like it's like every time you cheat on your diet, <laughs> you know, you gotta fucking do five hours of of uh, fucking jujitsu or, or or some shit. Yeah, I gotta I gotta hit cardio hard. Yeah, I to have fucking burgers all day. Yeah, at one, yeah, yeah. At one point, you'd be like, "Yo, fuck that! I'm not doing it." You know what I'm saying? But I then, know shit. Yeah, but then yeah. again, it's like, "Yo, bro, this is you're not new to this." Yeah, and that's the thing. That's the thing is right, and Jeff knows he has like this audience. You know what I'm saying? Like this still pimp that he has his audience. Like you know, like there's a niche for him. Like people that grew up, you know, with the with the new brood and all that. You know what I'm saying? When he came up, it's one of those things that everybody loves the way he wrestled before because it wasn't necessarily wrestling. It was like diving off high shit and murdering yourself. Yeah, you figure I would kill myself a little bit more every day, right? Yep. Like, Sir Darby Allen was a fan of Jeff Hardy. Yeah. The styles are damn near the same, right? And it's it's the thing is, they love you for the risks you take, but they can't see you take those risks if you're not wrestling. And that's the problem. Yeah. The problem is, like, yo, I got a fan base. No matter what, if I come back, they're going to love me. But how often do they really get to see you, like, consistently? It's not mostly sporadically. Like, you do something stupid, you're away for a bit, you show back up. You have a nice little run, maybe a year and a half. You go back to the substance shit. Oh yeah. And you do something. so you're like in and out. 
and not because mostly because of injuries. I don't remember Jeff Hardy like really being injured. I remember him just, you know, not knowing how to put whatever drugs down or whatever liquor down. Yeah, yeah. Huh? That's the case. Yeah, to be honest with you, the guy who took the most risks didn't get injured a lot. You know, Matt Hardy, right. I've I've seen been injured a couple times, yeah. and you know he's right. been out due to injury. But Jeff, his shoulder, yeah, yeah, Jeff yeah. has been out due to substance abuse pretty much. Absolutely. And yeah. and it, it's crazy. What's going on, pimp? And everybody in the chat, welcome to welcome to the stream. You know, we out here talking about Jeff Hardy. He's been released from the WWE, and you know it's sad to say it, but I'm not really surprised. Yeah, I can see that. You know, and and what makes it even worse. Is like he, they said it was it was alcohol that did it, and then they did that whole angle where Seamus, yeah, where he was a drunk driver and he hit Seamus. Mm -hmm. Now, how much bad taste would that have been if he actually did hit somebody as a drunk driver? Absolutely correct. And yeah. that was something that uh, the WWE got massive flack for from everybody. Yep. Except for Jeff, you know, Matt was like, "What the fuck are you guys doing? That's classless." And I was like, "Yeah," but Jeff didn't say no. No, yeah, I hate you. You could easily be like, yo, that's really sensitive subject, and you guys know I have a problem. So why would you want to include that? Yeah, it, it was just like I saw it, and I was like, yeah, there it is. But do you think, all right, you know, not to be uh, like psychiatrist or anything, but it has to be something deep down inside. Like, it triggered he, it? Yeah, you know, like men, yeah. like a, a mental reason why he's he's out there drinking. I don't know. I don't know if it's, you know, um, for the fact that he thinks that he needs to do it to be punished. You know, that's why he didn't turn down that shit or he, you know, he feels like he's not good enough to be where he's at. So he needed to do all those death defying shit. I don't know. But at yeah. one point, you know, it's like, yo, the rehab could have been turned down for the simple fact is like, yo, we want you to go to rehab because, you know, you did that shit on live TV. So we got to look good. Because there could be a thing where Jeff's like, yo, fuck, this, this shit ain't real. You're going to send me to this fake ass shit. For like, I'm going to be off TV for 30 days and then, I'm, then not, nothing's going to be fixed. Because how many people have to go back to rehab after they went to rehab from, the, from wrestling? A lot. Yeah. Because and it was, it's just the weirdest thing because yeah. right, they, they pay for the rehab and all that stuff, right? But first of all, how good is this rehab? And second of all, if, it, if they consistently lapse... What are you guys doing wrong? It it's it has to be the environment of the WWE. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no, because we we know for a long time. Oh, wrestling before the too. pandemic, we've been hearing about it being toxic back there. So yeah. the simple fact is that you don't know if you're gonna get released or not. Oh yeah. So it's like you're walking on eggshells every day. You come into work, you're like, yo, are they, am I gonna release today? Is it the quarterly time? Do, are they gonna? Are they? Did they make three hundred million dollars again? So they can release ten of us. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's one of those things where. That possibly is his way of dealing with it, even though he, you know, Jeff is one of those guys that would have a guaranteed spot anyway, because it's Jeff Hardy. Yeah. His merch is going to move. He, like I said, he has a fan base, but also he's like, yo, there's people that I knew for years that are gone now. You know what I mean? And so, like, and sometimes the angles they give him, I know he was not a fan of beating Karrion Cross. He was like, this is stupid. Even I know that's dumb. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, why would you bring this dude up with the belt on? Like, oh, you sure you want to do that? Yeah. Alright, your call. What's going on, Jeff? I did not hear that Chris Jericho was in the hospital. Um, yes. Yes. yeah, I don't know what's going on, Bryce. Um, maybe we could look up why Jeff, uh, Chris Jericho was in the hospital. But uh, yeah, the only information I heard was Jeff Hardy was released from the WWE because of mm -hmm. uh, drinking. I appreciate uh, y'all. Happy to hear that you're feeling better, Bryce. Yes. Um, let me just look this shit up real quick. Uh, reportedly hospitalized overseas. It just says that it was canceled and he was hospitalized overseas because um he took a break from AEW to be in Fozzie, so he's on tour with Fozzie. And, yeah. you know, he they canceled it because he was hospitalized. Interesting. Well, I mean, hopefully. Just, let's hope it's like an illness and not an injury. Yeah. Like something simple. Mm 
For real. Probably something like it has to be with his voice. It was non COVID related. Oh, there we go. So yeah, it's definitely like <laughs> it has to be with his, you know, his voice or something. Probably. Hmm. Oh, and uh, on on good news, ha- um, Hacksaw Jim Duggan announced that he is clear from cancer. Yes, they took all the cancer oh, okay. out of his uh, his pancreas. I believe. Yes. I believe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Great man. Great man. Yeah, that that One of those dudes. That, I literally grew up watching. I I got a two by four just to be like, well, this is what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> Threw up in the air. I was like, I'm not catching it. <laughs> 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 yeah, man, and yo, and you know my story when I met Hexo Jim Duggan, it sure. was it was amazing, and yo, he was one of those people that, you know, when you instantly meet him, you're like yo, now I know why I love wrestling, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. it, it like he, who he was inside the ring and who he was outside the ring, they meshed together, man. You know, Hexo Jim Duggan said hi to me. It wasn't whatever his real name would be, mm-hmm. but, but yeah, it was dope. Uh, Walter says it's crazy because you would think Jeff Hardy would get help just like John Moxley got help from AEW. Well, let's remember this: John Moxley started doing that now. Like he realized the fact that he's a father, and he realizes he's, I got to take care of this shit now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can't have a stolen bottle of Jack after every match. I got a kid to worry about at this point. You know, and Jeff has just always been, and yeah, I know Jeff has a kid or kids, but Jeff has always been free spirited. You know what I mean? So, like, I don't know. I'm not saying he doesn't take responsibility, but it doesn't seem as serious to him as it would be to anybody else. You know what I mean? Like, he's still living, like, he's in his early 20s, mid-20s. You know what I mean? Meanwhile, everybody else is trying to, even his brother's trying to fill the foundation, like, all right, this is for my kids. Now I can, you know, now I take less risk. You know what I mean? Now I do less things because I had a kid. You know what I'm saying? Seth Rollins ain't doing Phoenix Splashes man, as much nowadays. <laughs> Came, man just became a father. He understands. You know, um, I gotta, I gotta slow down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a thing of two men in very different positions. One, Jeff Hardy's not high up in the card. Let's remember that. You know what I'm saying? He's not even mid card at this point. When you're, when you have a program with Cedric Alexander, yeah, that's enough said. You know what I'm saying? But Moxley is one of the, is literally. One of the biggest stars they first got, if not the biggest star, next to Jericho. And I can't even say Kenny Omega because, with all due respect, Kenny Omega is Jap- is a Japanese star. Yeah, fresh cook, fresh off of being, being being Dean Ambrose, like he was literally still dripping off with Dean Ambrose. You know what I mean? So, I think that's that's the major difference between both guys. You know, one understanding that I have shit to take care of, and the other one that still lives like he's like twenty and forgets that. Yeah, two year old dude. And you got responsibilities. I'm and, and and also, um, it could be a toxic environment. What's going on, Kenny? Kenny from the call up in the building. Um, you know, it, you know, it could be a toxic environment. Cause think about this, man. Like we said, Kurt Angle looked for any excuse to get out of there when he had his his uh, substance abuse going on. You know, um, Jeff Hardy's had plenty of you know stints with his substance abuse. Uh, uh, Rob Van Dam had his sense with substance abuse. Even even Randy Orton, you know, a lot of these people, Austin, you know, they they all had their problems there. But you go to rehab to get better. But you don't. It's not a sick like it's not a sickness like a cold where you get over it. It's a disease. It's a mental. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a mental it's an ongoing process. Yeah, yeah it's, it's your whole life you have to deal with. You know what I'm saying? It's an addiction. Addictions just don't stop. So when you get out of rehab, yeah, the, the the honeymoon stage of that, you're doing fine, you're doing this, you're doing that. But when you go back to the environment that made you do what you were doing, there's a hundred percent chance you're gonna go back to doing it. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. It's gonna, it's literally the, the um, it's making yourself sick again. Yes. What doing the same thing that made you sick? What CM Punk said when he mm-hmm. returned to the to AEW. Mm-hmm. He said he got sick over there, and then he had to heal and get better. And now he's an AEW. Uh-huh. So, so it could be it could be two totally different things. Where like Jeff Hardy went and did his rehab, came back, and now you know he before he went to TNA, he went to rehab I believe twice mm-hmm. in WWE, and they got rid of him because 
the feds wanted to press charges on him when he burnt down the house with Matt Hardy. And then he went mm-hmm. to TNA. And then he had the problem with TNA where they try to cover it up. The same thing with Scott Hall in WCW. You know, Scott Hall also had drinking problems in WWE. We heard this from, you know, the beyond, you know, uh, dark side of the ring with the Ric Flair shit, you know? Mm-hmm. So it could just be like, yo, get better, come back, and we're not going to change. You know, it takes a, a village to raise a child, but it also takes a village to get over an addiction. And it could be that AEW is that village of, yo, we're a family first. So if you need to, f- to fix yourself, go ahead and fix yourself. When you come mm-hmm. back, we'll make sure that, you know, we accommodate you for, mm-hmm. you know, what's going on here and all that other shit because, you know, you, you're right. not alone in this. But, if you know, if Jeff Hardy's out there and, yo, go go wrestle Cedric Alexander for the 15th time and have a three-minute match. We don't give a shit what you do. We're just going to use you here and there. You know what I'm saying? It's like, no, I get it. it's, it's kind of like the reference I made on the tour on the show show last week. It's like, how many times are you going to hear, go ahead, dance, monkey? You know, no, I agree. Mm-hmm. I completely agree. Yeah, it's just one of those, one of those things where you know what that environment is going to lead to before you even get back to it. Go once I get the shit, and who knows if the stuff is back there relatively available for him. Yeah, like he doesn't have to go far to get it. Like it's there, and it be like you said, it, it, not that it's going to be one or the other. It could be both. You know, what I'm saying toxic environment and something that he just can't get over until he like literally goes away for like two or three years. Yeah. And it's like, they, they say it takes 21 days to form a habit, right? It takes 21 days to form a habit. Like if the wise is like clockwork, right? Unfortunately for Jeff Hardy, it seems like it's not, it's been longer than 10 years. Yeah. You know, and he really started that once he, um, once he got his single push, like right after that under whole undertaker thing, you know what I'm saying? It's like, that's when we really, he started going ham with the, with the, with the substance, you know? Oh yeah. Right. And it's probably, it might have been the whole thing. I'm with my brother, so there's not a lot of pressure on me. I'm alone. So now I am, and right away, everybody did, did, did the Shawn Michaels, Marty Jannetty thing right away. With both yep. of them. Yep. Oh, he's going he's gonna to be the Shawn, you know, even though he doesn't talk, he's very charismatic, you know, whatever. The problem is, like Eddie, Eddie did this. Eddie was like, yo, I can't be champion moment. This is too much. I'm about to relapse and go hit the bottles and pain pills. This is, I got to give it to JBL. I need a moment. You know what I'm saying? Because the pressure to be that guy is every day. Media tours. You got to, you're the main event. You, like Roman, you start the show, you end the show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Wherever they ask you to go, oh, we're going to do this for WrestleMania. You're going to hit 50 different, it's like doing a press tour if you're doing Avengers. But it happens more often because you have the 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 monthly pay-per-views, you know? Yeah. And because the product is continuous. It doesn't stop. It's a machine. And that's a problem. WWE is a machine that doesn't worry about the people. You know what I'm saying? They don't. And that's unfortunate. I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not saying Jeff is weak, but I'm just saying this is a real stronghold against him. Yeah. Or whatever no. substance it is, it's really strong. Oh, yeah. You know? It's hard yeah. about it. I, uh, real, real quick, um, I'm going to answer Brian, uh, Brian's uh Comment first, and then we'll go back to the old ones. He goes, I was wondering back in 93 when uh, Ke- uh, Kenny Von Eric committed suicide, was he getting rehab for his addiction? I just wonder anybody know. No, because they didn't They didn't test for anything back in those days. Like, you know, it, it was encouraged to take steroids and all the other shit. And, you know, oh. people were handing painkillers and muscle relaxers and all the yep. ch- cocaine. Like, you, you can had, listen to an interview. All that shit. Yeah, you can listen to an oh, interview um, with the Ultimate Warrior and Hogan or anyone like, like a shoot interview on Hogan. They always, yo, they're in the back shoot, like snorting up cocaine and all that other shit. Like the, the, the drugs ran wild back in those days. So Cold they didn't. Intended. Yeah, Cold no, Cold yeah. Intended. Yeah, so they, they didn't care. That's why a lot of these guys are dying young. Uh, Roddy Piper died young. You know, um, Ultimate Warrior died young. A lot of, uh, Eddie died young. You know, fucking Mr. Perfect. A lot of these guys are dying for heart failure because of all the drugs they took when they were back in the day. And, Kenny Von Eric also committed suicide because of his brother, his family. A lot of them were depressed because the young one died first. Uh, I forgot the young one's name. Was it Kevin? Eric Von Eric, I think. Yeah, one of the, like, the, the young one. Yeah. The young one was supposed to be like the, the best one out of all of them, and he died in a freak accident. No, he had a disease, right? He died off of, uh, he had a disease or something. I believe it's on the dark side of the ring. But um, I don't, I don't recall how he died. I know how Von, because he was, he was going to be pushed as the guy. Yeah. Because he was the IC champ at one point. 
Yes. It was like, oh, we're about to make him the guy, and all of a yep. sudden. And yo, fun fact: he only had one leg. He wore a prosthetic. He wrestled in a prosthetic. But um, but yeah, a lot of stuff happened with the Von Erics that they committed suicide due to the pressure of being the the top guys in in uh, the Texas organization. The the family being almost cursed with the younger brother dying. Then the the you know, like I think the oldest brother is the only one that's still alive out of all four, all four or five of them. Like mm-hmm. they died back to back to back and and you know that that was a tragedy. But no, there was there was no rehab back in those days. I don't think you can afford to go to your, rehab back in those rehab days. Was injured. Yeah. You get injured and then you're not around that shit unless you're buying it. But in the back you had it all around you. You know what I'm saying? Oh and, and also you couldn't afford to be injured either. Because the thing is Back in those days, if you wasn't on TV, you weren't getting paid. Absolutely. So, so unless you're at the point where you can't walk, or your arms broken and you can't really do nothing, you was wrestling. So a lot of these people were wrestling, hurt and injured, and all the other shit. And you know, um, they didn't do the the, the wellness policies until Hogan yeah, funny. decided. Again, the funny to, thing is, look how long it took for the wellness policy to kick in. Oh yeah, yeah. Because mm-hmm. once Hogan decided to. Testify against Vince McMahon. That's when they started testing for steroids, and then, yeah. and then uh, I think the Iron Sheik and um, Bob Backlund got stopped, and they had drugs on them on them, and um, Rob Van Dam got stopped for drugs. And it's w- funny, Rob, Rob, Rob Van Dam and Sabu are morons. So <laughs> yo, for real, you gotta be real, you gotta be real, because Rob Van Dam had, has now he has the ECW title, and WWE title, and this jackass, all due respect to Rob Van Dam, decides this is the time to get in a whip. And have one of the most recognizable faces in the world at this point. Because you just beat John Cena in the Hammerstein Ballroom in ECW land. Yep. And you decide this is the day I'm going to drive us at Boo with some drugs in the car. Yep. Dude, can you just not do it for a week? Yeah. <laughs> just, yo, put the blood down for a week, son. <laughs> a week. <laughs> yeah. A week, get a storyline going. Then after that, butt it up. Fucking understand that, bro. And then, you know, with all due respect, Sabu was gonna have a an amazing career there, but he could have been mid Carter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But no, we gotta blaze and get banged. Hell yeah. But yeah, they didn't they didn't you know, it, it takes a lot for a multi billion dollar company to care about you. And if you're not one of those people, you got you gotta you should have luck. Million dollars for yeah, them. yeah, you should have um, luck, man. Moving that merch, but even then, look like Bray Wyatt was moving the merch for them, but because yeah. Bray Wyatt understood his character and didn't want to get desecrated, he goes, "Yo, listen, I understand where you guys are coming from, and I understand you guys are professional in writing. I would have been like, professional this. Have you seen the shit they're writing now? Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying. But for the for that for what happened to Hardy, man, that's that's a simple thing, man. It's a yo, bro, you made a choice." You literally woke up that day, and at one point, he goes, yo, I'm going to carry on and do something, and I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to risk somebody else's life. Yeah. If they, uh, if somebody, I forgot who was it said. He goes, yo, the one thing I... Oh, uh, man, not awesome. He said, like, yo, first thing I got to do is take care of the person across the room from me. Yep. That's my first duty. We both go home. You know what I'm saying? Nobody gets hurt. Freak accidents happen. They call them is. But after that, you know what I'm saying? Make sure we both go home. You know what I'm saying? No injuries. You know what I'm saying? So that way we can do the next show. You know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah, that, that's what it is. It's a show. Huh? You know, it, it's a show and, and um, it, you ever seen Ready to Rumble? You know, they, it's a circus. And they're clowns dancing around the ring. You know, but, but you know, it like uh, Sting said, the moves are fake, the pain is real. Yep. And, yo, it, you try to do a German suplex on somebody and you don't know what you're doing. You can kill them. You can kill yourself. Absolutely. Yo, a brain buster. Yeah. Yo, man, that's murder. Yeah. That's murder at that Yo, point. I don't know if you remember this well enough, but when I was in junior high school, going into high school, this is around like the 2000s, mm-hmm. they had the don't try this at home. Mm-hmm. The reason why they said don't try this at home is because kids were actually trying to wrestle at home and killing themselves. There were yeah. kids mm-hmm. killing each other, uh, killing yeah, other I kids remember, trying to wrestle at home. I remember a story out of Ohio. I remember this clear as day. There was a brother that had his little sister. She was like five. And he power drived her and broke her neck. He didn't kill her, but he paralyzed her. Yeah. So, so he's like, dude. And he did he did the Owen Hart one, by the way. Mm. That's the one he did. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, 
bro. Yeah, th- this isn't bro, a game. Bro, I'd, rather, I'd rather you put me in a hole than I'd be like, yo, not, it's a bit much. If you're going to do some shit like a power bomb, son, I know one of my boys that did it to his brother and almost fucking destroyed his spine, bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yo, there was me and my brother were wrestling. It was like we came this close, this close to killing each other. Bro, you know, yeah, bro, I so, told you, I told you, I super kicked somebody under yeah. the chin. Perfect timing, bro. Like, yo, Sean would have been proud. But I, I, yo, I literally did it. And right away, I was like, shit. I, yo, I swear to God, I thought I killed the dude. Because I, I run under the chin, I go through, you know what I'm saying? I know what I'm doing, which is worse. If you know what you're doing, you learn, you learn martial arts, do that. And you're like, oh, that's terrible. Oh, yeah. Because the dude got up, he was out of it. But I was like, yeah, I'm never doing that shit again. I'm sorry, I can't. You know what I'm saying? That's that that's that perfect storm moment. He's walking towards me. I do it while he's coming at me. I'm like, Yo, for you real. Yeah. And like like everybody tells you, when you hit somebody perfectly, it feels like nothing. Because you're like going through them. So yeah. you're, you're like, but you just see him go. You're like, oh yeah, that, that's bad. Yeah, if you hit somebody oh, and it hurts murder. you, you did it wrong. I'm going to jury. For, <laughs> you know what I'm no, yeah, yeah. Never yeah. got a jury and go to jail. <laughs> for real. Yeah. Yeah. And Kenny yeah, goes. I hurt myself doing a body slam. I could have been one of the greatest heels in the business. How did you hurt yourself doing a body slam? What did you do wrong? He, did the person not push off of you? Or were you taking all the weight? I think he tried to body slam himself. Oh, okay. Oh, good luck with that. <laughs> Jeff Hardy. I said Jeff Hardy shit. Every time Jeff Hardy goes up and I see a table, I was like, yo, the higher he goes, the more he's going to go right through that table. Nobody's going to yep. be there. Yep. <laughs> you, see, you see him go. I remember there was one that he eradicated, son. The table was no more. I was like, that shit blew up under him. And I was like, and then all of a sudden, I see him get up. I go, you're a batch. And I'd have been like, yeah. Wow. But yo, he, must, he must have been higher numb because he kept going. Yo, did you see the tables break in uh, NXT War Games? Like, it, it almost felt like those tables were sold off because they, they all broke at the same oh, no. exact they, way. Uh, they broke them apart and then they glued them back together. Yeah, they all broke the same yeah, exact you know, way. Or, you know, you know, in Hollywood where they have that sugar glass that right yeah. before somebody's going to hit it, they blow it up. Yeah. That's what it looked like. Like, they blow up the table right before somebody's about to land on it. I was like, Dad, you, you're not that big, bro. Yo, for real. You're not that big. All right, like Bryce, the, appreciate yeah, you stopping by. That one generic dude that I told you about, that I don't know who he was in basketball shorts, I was like, you're not that big, bro. Yeah. Ron, Ron Breaker goes through that shit. I, I expect that shit to be eradicated. Hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, even, yo, even, uh, what's the name? Corey, Corey, Corey Day? The one that jumped yeah. off the cage? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yo, I was like, they got a real table out there? Cause just, you remember, they don't go through those tables very easily. You remember the ECW tables, right? The oh, real yeah. ones? Yeah. I remember Sabu leg dropping and just eh? you see tags on some fuck. Yeah, it would <laughs> bend. <laughs> it would bend. You know, um uh, I think it was uh The Secrets of Wrestling. You remember that mm-hmm. that, that show? Man, I remember that show. They, yeah. they they had one and they, they actually said that they use real tables because you only need, I think, two hundred and twenty five pounds of pressure to break them. And this, mm-hmm. since these guys three hundred and fifty pounds, mm-hmm. you know, the, if they looked at the table Oh, Cora Jade, my bad. If they looked at the table long enough, that shit would break. You know? So then you got these women out there. They're, they're normal sized women. They're like a, a buck ten soaking wet with bricks in their pockets. <laughs> you know? That's, that's another thing. You forget Jeff Hardy is actually 200, like, yeah. 210 to 220 pounds. Because you, you look at him and you go, you can't weigh that much, but he is. Yo, shit, he really is. And then when he goes through the table, you go, oh, he really is. <laughs> oh, he was taking the body slam and landed uh, wrong. Okay. Uh, I see? thought he was doing it. No, was, no, yeah, that's, yeah. If you didn't, like, the, I was watching one match in the Indies, a running power slam, that shit went, because the guy, the guy didn't tuck his head, and the guy didn't do it either. You just see the, eh. Ooh. The dude was out for, like, a good 10 minutes, and then finally you see him go and get up. And I was like, shit, dude. Yeah, the first thing you do is, I've never said that watch David Boy. I'm tucking yep. the head in you. Yep. You know what I'm saying? You don't murder your opponent. Yeah, you, you, you try not. It's to. not a death match. It's not a death match in Puerto Rico, as we we know. Yeah, and and, <laughs> and even if it was, you wait until after the match and you do it in the locker room in the showers. Yeah, you, you machete <laughs> the shit out of a human being. Word. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't know, man. That Jeff Hardy thing, it, it sucks, but you knew that was coming. Yeah. 
But yeah. I thought it was just straight off the cuff of what he did. But the way it wasn't live. Somebody filmed it. That was a that was um the house uh, show. House show. Yes. Somebody filmed it. But when he said no to the rehab, they were like, "Well, bro, we tried." And with all due respect to WWE, I, I don't like what they're doing now. I don't like the releases, but you give a dude a chance, and he says no, you got to be like, "Yo, we got to protect everybody else." Yeah. Because right, he was working with Drew and the Usos. Yep. Those are these are top guys at this point right now. Yo, and if it. Yeah. If it wasn't for that lazy kick that he threw against the Uso on the ropes, I would have never known that there was something wrong with him. Because n- not for nothing, these guys covered that up very well. Mm-hmm. Very like you know, I showed. I think Jay was in there, and yeah. Jay saw it, and Jay just he's like he sold as much as he could. He's like I yeah. mean, I think it was like yo, you get out. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> roll out and leave. Yeah, he wrote um like when he threw that kick, like Jay mm-hmm. turned around and like hit uh, Drew and Drew and um I, I forgot who else was in the match came in the ring. And then Roman punched Jeff on some. All right, and, uh-huh. you know, and, yeah, they kept they kept distracting the ref. I showed that video to Cruz, and Cruz was like, "What am I looking at?" I said, "See, you, you won't be able to tell because they covered it up." But look at it. Look at the way he kicks. He goes, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." Was he tired? I was like, "Nah, man, that, he's under something." Yep. And I showed him the match with Sting, and he's like, "Oh, come on, Jeff, not again." It's like, "Hey, man." That was that was one of those. Yo, him walking to the ring. He's on some. My man Sting is like, "Oh, Sting's on some." Yo, when Sting pinned him and put his four, like his weight on him, I was like, yo, don't get up, bro. Stop. I was like, come on, Jeff, son. Come on. And then Eric tried to come out. He's like, no, dude, I can do it. It was like, no, no, you can't. No, you can't. Word. You, know what I'm you did what you, you, you could have done what Seth Rollins did, but you would have done it by mistake. Yeah. And at that time, you didn't want to do that shit to Sting. Yeah, nobody does. Yo, uh, Pro Wrestling Podcast sent me a video. Yeah. Of a botch, and he wants our reaction to it. I'm gonna. One second, before you play, all right. Do I have lays? Hi, work this time. I didn't kill myself. Nice. Oh, I, I don't have it on camera though. <laughs> so I can watch it from here. Yeah, I didn't have it on camera because I was trying to set you up for the reaction. Oh, I'm definitely going to see this shit. Yeah. Uh, here, let me get the, the link. All right, hold on. Let me. All right, now we set it up. Can you guys? All right. Here, yeah, I'll. I'll do it so you can see the fucking. Oh, here we go. Tell me he's like a package power driver. Where the fuck is it? Oh, you have it on. Oh, it's showing her? Yeah, I saw it in the chat. They're on the top row. Oh, the, uh, oh you're looking, go, you're looking you're looking at it through see the it. Yeah, I can see it from my phone. Oh, all right, all right. I thought yeah. you know I was gonna try to show you. All right. Now he looks like he's Oh, now. Oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. If he executes this maneuver from the top rope. Oh, and he just jacked his jaw with a forearm. What is this? What is this? Charade getting on the top floor in the high rank district. Here he goes. Crossing himself. Okay. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's a... Done. You're damn right he's done. Times, bro. You what? What? No, oh. no, 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 no. I've no, seen no. that one before. No, I've no. Seen that one before. Count to three, ref. Count to three. Get him out of the ring. Yeah. Dude. Why did you kick him out? Why did you let him there kick out of that? What is he You gotta stay in that shit. Mm, sh- nah, this dude's dead, bro. He you know sure ain't funny? happy about that shit. You know what's funny? He probably did that shit a thousand times. He just picked, he was just too tired in the match to do it then. Yeah. He over rotated. But damn, son. Ooh. Well, like, I, when I see that, I just go. <laughs> yeah, man. That's where you wish you had that Kurt Angle neck on some, some Brock shit. Yeah, man. Nah, yo. That was like. Watching the Undertaker, Sasha Banks, Alita jump through over the shit, and they fucking bend backwards. 
It's funny. Remember, Yo. remember that that was uh, Jimmy Fly Snooker son that didn't catch the Undertaker. Yes, yes, Deuce and Domino. That's why they released his ass. <laughs> Pretty much. Dead serious. They were like, "Yo, yeah, we almost killed the most bankable guy in our most bankable feud." What the fuck, bro? Yep. We got They got to wrestle one more time. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's like my man yeah, Undertaker jumped out, bro. sounding like Rocky. Catch me. He didn't kick out. He lifted his hand up, but the ref stopped the count. It's like, yo, come on, ref. Like, you should have known. You should have known. One, two, three. Get him out of there. The dude he was wrestling even said it. It was like, all right, yo, yo. He's done. He's done, everybody. One, two, three. Come on. Let's get him out. Yo, for real. That was definitely a moment for someone in the crowd to be like, someone please call 911. Like, yo, my man straight out. He hit the. What's going on, RK? He hit the, the, the mat, and all you heard was. Put in that work, Devin. Don't give up. <laughs> but yeah, my man, his neck gave up. <laughs> Yo, his neck was like his neck said no. What are you doing to me, brother? Yeah, man, your your neck ain't supposed to land like that. It's not supposed to land at all. You're not supposed to land on it. Nope. It's crazy, man. Yeah. Same. Yeah, I, I was like, oh no, he needs some milk. <laughs> My man. He needs fun, some like, milk. You don't, move like that. you don't do that shit late in the match. You do that shit early. Word. Yeah, what and I'm. You, what the fuck you doing, son? <laughs> bringing that shit out at the end of the match. Dude, <laughs> you better get yourself like a fucking super kick or some shit. <laughs> Yo, or the elbow drop. You don't Shit, need to man. do a 750 fucking moon salt splash. Oh my god, bro. Yo. And the funny thing is, I was about to start making fun of the announcer. He's like, what is this? What is this? No, he was right. Like, what are you doing on the top rope? Don't do it. <laughs> what are you trying to I, do? I would have been on some. <laughs> Just <laughs> jump and then elbow. There's nothing wrong with an elbow drop, son. Yep. Or elbow frog splash. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Keep it yeah, yeah. The twelve people like, in that in that arena would have liked you to to land it and not on your neck. You know? <laughs> yeah, like yo, my man, I paid ten dollars not to see him kill himself. Yo, nothing <laughs> <laughs> like, wrong with that, fellas. I'm yeah. in you guys put on great shows, so you know we're just saying Word. don't murder yourself for ten bucks. Yeah, yo, you know, you know how many uh, indie shows? I've seen like video clips of and the dudes like on a ladder and everyone's like, please don't die. Please don't die. It's like, yeah, please don't yeah. die. Cause this is the last the time that we're going to yeah. don't kill yourself for 20 bucks. Yo, for real. Okay. Look at, look at the way Randy and Roman wrestle and they get paid millions. Yeah. Randy be headlocking everybody. Also. Yep. He's still DDT and fucking the fiend. Mm -hmm. Yo, he kicked out another guy that pinned him, said, ain't no way, boy. Yo, the guy that, yo, the guy that was pinning him, when the ref said he, he did two, he looked like, he, like, he tried to do the math in his head. He was like, that, no, 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 no. I, I'm not even touching him. He didn't move. Please, please, can someone get this guy out of the ring? He's dead. Like, he's dying underneath me. I don't want to be here no more. Count to three, please. Please count to three. I'll give you my money. <laughs> like, holy you shit. That's what you do the sting and you fucking pin him. Like, put yeah. your weight on like, bro, let, don't do it, bro. Oh, we, gotta get, we gotta get you to the hospital, son. You're done. Oh, yeah, smack the ref or something. One, two. Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you? I remember Neville fucked up his ankle. And Jericho switched it. It was like, he was like, yo, his ankle fucking. He slapped Charles Robinson on some. What the fuck are you doing? And then they called the match. Yeah, he like he fucked himself up. <laughs> we got we got called this one. Yo, for real. That's it for <laughs> that, I'll take a roll up. Like yes, yeah. the ugly stone cold shit that he did with the oh yeah, a roll up or some D. I'll take it. If somebody's hurt, I'll take that any day of the week. Yeah, you know what's crazy? Yeah. When I was a I was a kid watching that 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 match with Austin Owen Hart, and you know, I any other time I'm like, yo, that's bullshit. There's no, but when Austin like barely got him and rolled him up in my head, I was like, all right. Owen is doing this, doing this dude a favor right now. 
like just stand there making it seem like he had his legs moving as light as he could trying to seem like he was struggling one two three all right get out there and he just stood up to what like he's trying to distract the the, the crowd so also yeah. can get the, the help it's yeah. like also fucking you know the way he was pulling his like knee pad i was like oh he's done yeah he's done son because you know austin doesn't austin works stiff so for him to slow down you're like that's weird you know what i'm gonna say yeah yeah huh? But yeah, that that leads us to our point. Don't do crack. But but yeah, well, so, pretty, we started with Jeff Hardy, so that yes. doesn't make sense. Yeah, that that's exactly where I was going. With right. it. But yeah, Jeff Hardy got it wasn't a surprise. Do you think he turned down rehab so that way he can go to AEW? I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. I don't think I don't think his mind frame was about any of that shit at that point, brother. I think it had nothing. I think he was just also like, yo. I don't need it of some pride shit. You know, like, you know, you know, like you're telling somebody, yo, you need to do this. This is fucking up your life. And they're like, nah, I'm good. Don't tell me what the fuck you do. I've been living this long. Go, yeah, the point is we want to make sure you keep going. But out of pride and, you know, the worst thing is to tell a, a, a man what he needs to do. Yeah. Horrendous. Especially like we said it before, the worst people ever retire in sports are pro wrestlers. And pro fighters. Yeah. It is impossible. Yo, Chuck Liddell should have retired years ago. Like right after he beat Ortiz, son, off into the sunset. Yep. The fuck out of here. On top. GSP figured that out. <laughs> he goes, yo, I'm I'm good right now. I can walk. I'm healthy, you know. Barry Sanders completely understood it. You know what I'm saying? And some people just don't get it, bro. It's like, yo, yeah. I'm done. Like, yo, I truly believe in this is gonna suck. I believe Flair's gonna die in the ring, son. He wants to. Like, I know. He wants to. And he wants yeah. to die against Sammy Guevara. He wants to wrestle Sammy Guevara and die in the ring on some wrestler shit. Cause it wasn't he thinks the wrestler was yeah, made wrestling. after him or some shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. like like you you know what the thing is though? Like I get that. But no one wants to see that. That's yeah. not that's yeah. not a memory that we wanna have. I don't mm -hmm. wanna sit there and be like, yo, Ric Flair died in the middle of the ring like a like a warrior. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, he we died saw, in the ring like we a saw, moron. We saw, Owen, we saw Owen Hart die in the middle of the ring. We don't need to see another person die in the middle of the ring. We saw, we almost saw Jerry the King Lola die outside the fucking ring. We don't need to see that. That's we not something. We almost die. Yeah. We, th that's not something we need to see. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. We don't, we, we, don't, we don't need to see that. And I get it. Your heart is in wrestling. You love it and all that other shit. But my man... Yo, just like how Jake the Snake said during his induction ceremony, he his first love was wrestling and everything else came second. You're gonna have to find a new love, man. It's called life. Yeah, not everybody's so meant to do to, it forever. It, it has to get to the point. The thing goes in the Flair is one of those who's the same thing as Hardy. He's like, yo, it's, yo, my man, how hard headed do you think Flair really is? I mean, think about that shit, bro. He's helicoptering a wang out in the top of a plane. You're not gonna tell that nigga no. This is true. You know what I'm saying? Now look how long it took the Undertaker to retire. Look at my man. You're done. Yeah. Goldberg almost killed you because you didn't realize five years ago you should have been done. Yeah. And yo, and I remember he's like, yo, I want to go out on the, the the best match I can. Then you should have you should have went out. Well, Shawn. Shawn Michaels won. When you retired, Sean? Yeah. When you retired, Sean, because that match was almost as good. But it had more more on the line, so to me, it had that emotional push to it. Yes. When you did that, you have retired the the first best guy that's ever done it in this ring. The guy, not the guy Triple H wants to be, or Bret Hart claims to be, the best pure athlete in that ring. Next, well, him and Kurt Angle. Yeah. With all due respect. But yeah. Sean wasn't an Olympic wrestler. Sean was a pro wrestler. The and best pro wrestler that was not an amateur. I beat. And I retired him. Done. Yo, Stonebrook closes. Walk away. And you know what? The, you know what makes that that statement so fucking true? The fact that Shawn Michaels was gone for seven years and came back a better fucking wrestler. Yo, even in those ugly ass brown pants in that school in that school soccer mom haircut. Yep. That people make fun of AJ Styles for, but Shawn first brought it out. Oh yeah. Remember that? And he came out and he did his thing, but then he had that street fight with with Triple H, and he just you're like, oh, also Shawn is Shawn is back. Yep. Sean is ready to do shit now. 
And then the match with Shelton Benjamin, Kurt Angle matches, Benoit. You're like Jericho. Yeah, I'm saying Jer- Jericho. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You just sit back and go, holy shit. This man came back, then followed Christ, and didn't lose a step. Yep. You, you know, it, sometimes he was just looking better. Yeah. Because he was slimmer. He wasn't eating up all that muscle. And you know what the crazy shit is? That goes to show you that Shawn Michaels has to be one of the best of all time because he did it in different eras, but he got better once he was able to wrestle with people that can keep up with him. Mm-hmm. Like Kurt yeah, Angle, Jericho. Thing, yeah. Not a lot of people were as athletic as he was. He had to, he had to dumb down his shit to, to wrestle Diesel. Diesel had like 15 knee operations. He ain't doing the shit that, that Sean's doing at his you, pace. You remember him running in the WO and then, ah! I was like, oh, what yeah. happened? Yeah, the, 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 like, oh, what happened? He just like his knee just said. I was like, yep. That yeah, scream. I was like, oh, what's wrong? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, well, but yeah, but then Sean would have great matches with with uh, Shelton Benjamin. Oh yeah. And that's, you know, literally, that with all due respect, is better than him. But he definitely can turn tear the house down. Kurt Angle, Ray for the one or two matches they had. You know what I mean? Yeah, I remember so, that. You know, yeah. The it was on Raw. It was SmackDown versus Raw right before the the bragging rights. I remember yeah. that that match. That was a good yeah. match. That was a dream mm-hmm. match. Mm-hmm. Ray's another one. The one, I, the one I was always pissed about we didn't get was him and Eddie. Oh yeah. I would love him and Eddie. Man. Yeah, that would have been dope. Or him and The Rock. I think yeah, him. You know, you know why that didn't happen, right? Was well, it was political or some shit, right? Because they were tag team champions yeah, for a day so and then they got rid of. Here's a fun part, right? So Triple H and Sean. The moment The Rock became The Rock, were threatened by this kid right away. We're like, shit, he looks good. He was good in the ring, and he does something better. He does something better that we both can't do on that mic. Yep. Like it's just it comes, it flows. You know what I mean? It's no effort. You know, he's can he wrestle like Sean? Absolutely not. Can he work out like Triple H? I don't know. I don't know what to name it. No. But everything is natural. Everything makes sense. Everything flows. So they were like, yo, this kid will take our spot. And that's why that never happened. And at the end of the day, he did. Yeah, no, he did. He did. He did. Because when right. you think about it, when it comes down to wrestling, it's it's Ric Flair, Sting, Hogan, Austin, Rock. Yep, absolutely correct. You know? Absolutely correct. Those, one of those guys, you switch them out for the Mount Rushmore of wrestlers oh, yeah. and all that shit that you put them on. But they're the rotation. And The Undertaker, too. They're the, they're the rotation. Yeah. You know, somehow it's going to be them okay. yeah so it's uh it's, it's definitely um it's crazy to see a guy come back and be that good and then you kind of get sad when somebody comes back and they're not that good you go Shit. yeah Kurt angle's second stint in wwe recently that was like yeah, damn you see his neck you just you'd be awesome yeah he was stiff yeah fox sucks because i love kurt man i uh, i yo no one made you suck more famous and then to the point where he was like, I do suck. <laughs> but he, the funny thing is, far from the further from the truth. You he was he was offered uh, a chance to manage someone. Matt Riddle. Or, Matt Riddle, yes. And, and he, he was no. yeah, because of the money. Yeah. He was like, but the he money was wasn't right. His own, he was also starting his own protein line and he had his uh, podcast. Yes. He was like, there's a lot of shit I want to do that doesn't involve wrestling and killing myself. Because that was going to lead to a match between both of them. Probably. Ultimately, no, ultimately, that was a plan. Like, eventually, he'll turn on you, and then you'll have a match at WrestleMania. Yeah, because that's usually how everything goes, especially with Kurt Angle. Mm-hmm. You know? Absolutely, yeah. But, yo, yeah. not for nothing, yo, him facing Baron Corbin at WrestleMania was the best that could have happened for him. Cause, like, honestly, who's he going to wrestle? Anybody else, they would have had been a, a, a more intense match, and I, he could have pulled it off. I'm not saying he couldn't have. He could have had that one more in him, but like we said, we don't want to see anybody get hurt, or we don't want to see him look like the Undertaker and Goldberg. You know, absolutely. Or somebody where he winds up hurting himself yeah. trying to overdo it. You know what I mean? Or DX so, yeah. versus the Brothers of Destruction in Abu Dhabi. Oh like, God, yeah, we don't bro. want that shit to happen. Oh my God, son! Everybody looked bad. Everybody yep. looked horrendous, son. I'm like, Jesus, guys. Holy shit, you should have just I would have been like, yo, I understand the paycheck is massive, but we're all really old and we're we can't go like we used to, brothers. Where Sean, you got a super kick in you, you got a choke slap in you, you got a pedigree in you, you got a choke slam in you. 
That's all we got. We got one move. Let's not overexert ourselves. Oh, no, no. McMahon said, fuck this. You guys can do it. I would be like, no, fellas. Release me. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, tarnish your legacy. You got a great legacy, but that's going to look like ass out there, bro. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Once again, that pride, son. The pride in the pig. Yeah. Yo, there Green was... Ego, you know what I'm saying? That's just... That's the most dangerous thing when it comes to, especially to men. Yeah. It's like, oh, I can do it because I'm so good enough. You're not. Especially... I'm going to get paid a lot. You will, but you're not good enough. <laughs> yeah, especially men that are on top of the mountain. You know, when you're, when you're a warrior, when you're a fighter... Or, or, you know, someone who does this and it's a single thing and you're on top, you're not trying to get rid of that throne. Mm-hmm. You're not trying to get rid of that throne anyway because that's how you identify yourself. Um, you know, this is that old saying, it's what I know, it's what I know how to do and I do it well. Yep. That's all it is. That's it. That's why a lot of these wrestlers are still doing it in these shows and they shouldn't. I got to right. left WWE and he already got booked to have a match tag team over Rikishi. Seriously. Yep. Already. Where Kishi, can I follow where Kishi posted up? We're back. And it's, it's a picture of them two gonna have they're gonna wrestle uh, some other tag team. Wow. Apparently, from what I'm understanding from the PC, he could still go. Like there's nobody that goes, nobody goes, he looks old, everybody's on some. He can still go. You know what I'm saying? And but two things, Scotty is not the biggest guy. And Scotty didn't have an insane moveset. It's like if Dean Malenko could still go. Yeah. Second go wrestler. Yeah. He wasn't fucking doing, you know, corkscrew somersaults off top ropes. <laughs> if for real. Texas Clover leaf and just. Yeah, word. Yeah. Yo. And also, like, it really do. It also depends on the style you do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's if true. If you're a brawler, for the most part, you're okay. You know. But don't get them doing the high spots. If you're technical, same deal. My man, if you're a hybrid and you high fly and all that shit. Once you hit that forty, son, bring it down. Yeah, like to the ground. <laughs> yeah, like like Mick Foley. Uh-huh. You know, you only had but so many of those in you. No, no, we haven't got the DX yet. Uh, uh, Burns Black. We're waiting for um, Gigi and uh, the show. Word. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, when you was gone, Pro Wrestling, you missed um, the KKK came in the chat because <laughs> every time he leaves, some. <laughs> It's a hey, weird yo. motherfucker comes in. Hey, listen, man. I'm just, I'm still trying to remember. Fuck, butt fucker. I yeah, couldn't right? discuss that with anybody at work. I'm like, I got, I'm, you know, you ever did something you want to tell somebody like, your butt fucker, bro. There's a dude in the chat named butt fucker. And he goes, that's my real name. And then he goes, yeah, because you know, that's what they do in Brazil. It's like Tuesday in Brazil. Word. <laughs> he knows it's like, ain't no like that. It's, not, yeah. it, it's like, just, yeah, I mean. That's but, not. No one would ever believe Buttfucker was in the chat until I was like, wait, is that for real? And the Buttfucker 3000. Yes. Buttfucker 3000, yeah. That's the only the way to get pregnant model, in Brazil. He's the older model of the Buttfucker. Yes. He was not 8000. The no. one that show once again. Yes, this is true. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Crazy. Like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, yo, oh, and it's green. The ball's on this bastard. <laughs> oh, yo, man. for real. And yo, at least he wasn't a tool, which I appreciate. That's true. Yeah. But, like but like most of the motherfuckers. This is wrong. Pro, you have to learn about Brazilians. That's like their way of yeah. life. Yo, for real. Yeah. You remember that like, old you myth look, when you when you do anal, your ass gets bigger? <laughs> well, it's yo, not a myth over there. Look up, and this is going to sound, look up Brazilian porn. The second one down is going to be anal. Yeah. And, tra- and trannies. <laughs> <laughs> it's hand in hand, bro. <laughs> That's why they love anal. Yo, bro, I'm not lying. It's gonna, you're gonna be, you're gonna see anal and really big asses in trans. <laughs> I wish I was joking, but this is the truth. My man's gonna look up the porn like, why is Anaconda Five showing up? <laughs> this shit. I said, yo, why is she so tall? Because that's a dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can eat that Adam's apple. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It yeah. Kind of went off the rails, yeah. but I, we're just saying. He was there yesterday. He was watching the movie. <laughs> and then Mimi goes, what the fuck did I just come into? Hey, Mimi, sometimes wrestling <laughs> no. gets dirty. <laughs> well, no, it was, well, yesterday was, we was watching uh, 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 the man, man of Tai Chi. Uh, tai Chi. A dude came in named Buttfucker3000. 
spelled exactly how I'm saying it. Yep. And we were like, and then he goes, oh, that's my real name, Buttfucker. I'm like, then he goes, he's Brazilian. We go, oh, that makes sense. Perfect that's, sense. It's like, that's how you guys roll. Then he goes, in Brazil, that's normal. We go, yeah, we know. Yeah. <laughs> we seen the documents. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely correct. Yeah. For real. It's better than Adolf. <laughs> he goes, it's a wrestling podcast. Yeah, this is that's pretty much what you know, it's wrestling. That, yo, that's part of wrestling. Listen, you left. We started with Hardy and we went through a whole lot. This is and true. And then we got the butt fucker. So don't don't act like we wasn't talking about wrestling prior. This this is true. Don't be that guy. Yeah, you know? And this is yo, this is the perfect segue into my next question. Mm-hmm. Do you think Liv Morgan deserves a rematch? No. Me neither. I don't. Because first of all, she shouldn't have gotten one in the beginning. Because she had lost 75 matches True. in a row. And then all of a sudden, she's a number one contender. Tony Storm was not around. So I could understand, understand Tony Storm with Charlotte. That makes perfect sense. Yes. Like, oh, she wasn't around, but her reputation precedes her. And she's Liv the only Morgan one left. She doesn't really proceed. Like, she doesn't have, like... Like Tony, anybody that seen Tony Storm wrestle in the UK or in the Independence, you know she's good. And with all due respect to Liv Morgan, the, most of the times I've seen her wrestle, she's she's lost against Carmella. Yeah, so I'm like, even before that, I'm like, I don't, you're not a viable contender or threat. True. You know what I'm saying? But first of all, the fact that you were the, the one on one contender is insulting to everybody that's in that arena and is watching. I'm like, how does that work? She didn't. She didn't win the King of the Ring, the Queen of the Ring, or the what is it? The Crown of the Ring. The uh, Queen's Crown. Queen's Crown. That's stupid yeah, name, yeah. but whatever. Yeah, I'm going with it. Um, then she came. Then she came on Raw, and continued to lose, to Carmella and other people. So, do me justify to me. What's that? <laughs> I always thought when giving anal to a female, yeah, her booty no, gets bigger. She did earn those losses, though. I'll give you that one. <laughs> no, no losses. But I'm saying this. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. For that, yo, honestly, oh, yeah. you give it a Dewdrop. Because she's won. Dewdrop was winning. And even if she lost the, 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 the whatever the hell it's called, yeah. she still had, had wins before that. Fuck, Tamina had more wins. No, it's just, it's true because there was it was almost like there was only two wrestlers on fucking SmackDown. There were Carmella and Liv Morgan. And Carmella won all those fucking matches to prove that she was pretty. And then they go to Raw. She beat Liv Morgan the first night on Raw again. And then they had this five woman, no more, yeah. They had this five woman fucking match, and Liv Morgan wins, and now she's the biggest thing on Raw. And I don't understand that. Like I don't understand how people can accept it. You know, it's like you you mm-hmm. want Liv Morgan to get a title so badly that you're willing to believe that she lost her way to a title shot. That don't that don't make sense. Yo, that's that's perfect. She literally took L's. On top of L's. Same thing you know with Drew saying? McIntyre. Oh, yeah. I mean, Drew McIntyre lost his first opportunity at the Money in the Bank. And then he got another chance for reasons I don't fucking know. Him, AJ Styles, and Randy got another chance. I'm like, why did they get another chance? Nobody interfered. They, the man just lost. Yeah. Then he goes into it and still loses. And still gets a shot somewhere down the line. Yeah. Oh, and I, I would like to just bring up the fact that um, does anybody remember the time when Shane McMahon, Vince McMahon, Stephanie McMahon, and Triple H were out in the ring, and oh, they're no. like, "We're never gonna have commercials during wrestling matches again. The automatic rematch clause is null and void. We're not gonna do the rematch. We're gonna listen to you people out in the crowd. We're gonna listen to you and you." And you, and you're going to love me. And then what happened? The next match turned into a best seven, best out of seven. And every time they did a roll up, they went to commercial. For that, yo, my man, just do the fucking commercial during the match. It's all right. We don't need, every match is a best two out of three pinfall match. Just so that way, hey, the match is over. We're going to commercial. What? We're not stupid. We're not fucking stupid. And then, yo, yo, and beautiful. No more rematch clause. Okay, so your champion loses and now he gets a rematch. What? That don't make sense. He shouldn't no, even be in a number one contenders match. That starts on Tuesday. Ah, okay. It starts yeah. Monday. Yeah, they didn't say which title. You title's. didn't read the state law. Yes, that's true. The Intercontinental Champion doesn't get a rematch. Absolutely right. And it, you know, to me, it was always hilarious because the rematch clause to me was the best way 
and the worst way to keep the feud going, no matter how good or bad it was. Yep. But once you take that away, why is he still wrestling this dude, even though it's non-title? Dude, move on. You made that rule to move on. And it would have released 8,000 people. You could have moved on. <laughs> yeah, for else. real. Because apparently, WWE, all you have to do is bitch and whine about not getting a title shot. Yes. And everybody's really, really sensitive. If I call you a bitch ass, you'll give me a title shot. Yep. You're all, and I'm like, wait, hold up, babes. We want that. Dude, I call you a bitch ass. I have not earned anything. Why would you give me a title shot? What if I roll you up? It's like, and, yo, dude, make it make sense. Yeah. Like, and, you know, listen, call me whatever you want, sir, but the point is I already beat you. Back in the line. You want to sit back in the line. <laughs> and, and the crazy shit is if you ask for one because you earned it, no, mm -hmm. no, we're not giving you shit. Huh. Wait, 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 hold on, wait, hold on. Tell me something. Selena Vega challenged Bianca Belair. Bianca mm -hmm. Belair accepted. We don't do that here. You're not the number one contender. All right. Bianca Belair loses in 27 seconds, gets a rematch. No. Wait, what? <laughs> what? 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 She she didn't wrestle the original person who was supposed to wrestle. Yeah. Somebody else came and took her shot. And, and her name wasn't on the contract like Finn Balor. <laughs> you seen the thing all over again. Her name wasn't on the contract. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. All right. So this is this is how we're gonna do it. This is, all right, this is how we're gonna do it. All right, cool, cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Go out there and tell them that we're paying her more money because we got rid of your friends. All right, so she says, and now it's Liv Morgan's fault. Like, no, no. The only thing we can actually hold these wrestlers accountable for is the shit that they do in between the ring when they're wrestling. Mm -hmm. Because we can't even be held accountable for what they say anymore because somebody else is saying it. Absolutely correct. They're saying Absolutely other correct. people's words. And it's, you know, it's hilarious. Like I said before, with the, with the Edge and, and Miss shit, both of them, and I can't stand either one of those guys, both of them are better with promos. We both, we all know this. Oh, yeah. We've heard Edge have a cut a crazy promo. We've, even with the stupid five second poses. Yep. We've heard the Miz. It's so annoying as he is, cut them crazy shit. Not even, I'm not even talking about that, uh, the talking smack shit with Danny Bryan, because everybody wants to go to that shit. I'm talking about him in general. Oh, yeah. Just cutting promos on people. Like he's good. Yo, him and I'm recognizing this. Then why the fuck are you guys writing for these two guys that can go off the cuff whenever they want? Yeah, he was one of the few people that could go toe to toe with John Cena back in those days. Absolutely correct. And Absolutely and correct. and the shit like, they they did on Raw. Yeah, like the the wrestling with him was shit, but those promo works. I'm like, all right, dude, let's yo, let's have more of this. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because they're both really creative. And like I said, from the top of the head, money. You know what I'm saying? They'll it's like a great game of tennis. They'll play off each other. We're like, oh, all right, cool. Now it's my turn. You know what I'm saying? But you're going to give Edge and The Miz, two of the best guys you have on the mic, you're going to give them scripts? Yeah. And bitch-ass scripts, too, like to get cheap pops. Yeah. That was that was their biggest downfall. You see, that's the crazy shit. It's like, you don't, like, the WWE never acknowledged their competition mm -hmm. because they want to be the, the, the sole thing, entity in, in wrestling. It's not because, like, yo, we don't want to acknowledge the fact that AEW exists because their competition it's no this is the story and this is what we want you to know about you know what i'm saying like when you watch a fucking fast and the furious movie they don't reference a fucking another fast and the furious type movie like yep, this, they don't this, go yo the transporter <laughs> yeah they don't go they don't sit there and go you know you guys after you watch this movie you should watch transformers and then tyrese is like who the fuck you talking to don't worry about it they don't do that yeah, it's, it's straight out. It's like, yo, the, the you're watching this show to see the Miz and and Edge talk, not to see them talk about fucking MJF and CM Punk. You watch MJF and CM Punk talk about the Miz and and Triple H because we all know the bad blood between CM Punk and and WWE. And what's the best way to talk shit about somebody that has beef with them is to talk, is compare them to the people that he's fucking talking shit about. You know, but. Uh, the, it, it's it's almost it's it, it's kind of stupid, like that's the type of shit you would give Ricochet. Let Ricochet or like Liv Morgan, that's perfect for her. Right. Yep. She hasn't yep. like she hasn't been here that long. She can say this and you know like yo, this is the new way of thinking that us wrestling. You you stole all the money and got my friends fired. Edge been here for 25, 30 years. 
Stop with the you're getting in people's uh, people's heads. Motherfucker, like, the Miz. Man, that used to be your thing. Yeah, the Miz. That used to be interesting. You open up a tune, it's like you start fucking yep. with your head. Yep. The Miz Where? is still in that little girl's head when he won the WWE title. She she can't sleep at night. Yeah. <laughs> you, don't don't worry about the Miz getting in people's heads. Uh, Becky Lynch got a little girl like that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> But no, I, I agree with you. I completely, it's like, I never understood trying to write for two guys that don't need you to write for them, ever. Like, if I know if somebody gave The Rock a script, he'll go, um, first and foremost, I don't know who you are. Second of all, it doesn't really matter because I'm The Rock. You know, I come in here and torch shit yeah. off the cuff. Even when the shit sounds bad, it's still better than most of the shit the guys back here. Yeah, I think if they handed uh, The Rock a script, he'd be like, just give me the cliff notes. What do you want me to say? <laughs> WrestleMania, yeah, yeah. WrestleMania, John Cena. I'm gonna fuck you up. Beautiful. Got it. <laughs> yeah. And Give he'll me turn the gist of it, and I got the rest. Yeah, he'll he'll turn that shit into a half hour fucking soliloquy about how he's gonna fuck <laughs> up John Cena. <laughs> exactly. You know, yeah. and, you know, certain people don't need you to hand them notes. I'm fucking like shit away from me. like Kevin Owens. What are you doing? Oh, we wanted you to. You need to get away from me, dude. I go out there and I'm gold on that mic. Get away from me. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I make valid points. Yo, Sami Zayn too on the look. Sami Zayn too. He does it in an annoying way, but he is good. You know what I'm saying? He's just irritating. Monday Night Raw 2018. Is that when The Rock had his shit written on his forearm? Which I think was a work. I think they just did that for uh, for for Cena to have some. Have I ever heard a Sasha Banks promo? Yeah, I'm not saying she's the best in the world. I can't. I can't remember Sasha Banks promo. It, it, to be honest with you, it's a bunch of like just talking in the, <laughs> you know, that little laugh she does. Yeah. You know, like, cause, cause all right, I'm going to be honest. She over, she overacts those promos, but I mean, if that's her character, then I guess that's the character. She's trying to be those that, uh, over the top. Yeah. I was a fan of Becky before she became Becky McGregor. Yes. I used to, you know, I used to like, cause it was truth to the point, even when she was the man. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. now I'm just like, my God, this guy in the UFC, I don't need to see this shit again with a woman. <laughs> yeah, but the promo... This, this dude is already... A, yo, he has, he's annoying on Twitter, Instagram. True. Oh, fuck yourself. The I don't bathroom. need two of them. I don't need two of them. This is true. This is true. But the promo she cut before the match with Liv Morgan on Monday was, was good. No, it was. wasn't McGregor. It was, it yeah. was a storyteller. Uh -huh. You could tell whoever's working with her on delivering these promos, you know, she's excelling very fast. And she told the mm -hmm. story, and it was one of those. I was listening, mm -hmm. and you know how I feel about some of these fucking. It's just, so it's. I was listening. I was like, you know what? You got it. You got this round. Two points for you. That's right. Because yep. uh, beyond popular belief, I don't know how y'all think about me, but I don't. I don't go out on Raw and 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 want to watch people fail. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm mad that at them. Happens. Yeah, yeah, I'm mad at them because they are failing, and I know they can do better. I want better for them. I want better for us. The better you do, the better it is for me. Yep. But, you know, unless you're Cena, because then you eat a dick. The Rock cutting a promo on a cosplay, a fat Undertaker, and Stone Cold, and a stoned Hulk Hogan was the funniest shit I've ever seen. A fat Undertaker and a stoned Hulk Hogan. Was this, was this during his Hollywood days? When he would sing when he, in the middle he, of the when he, when he came back as the Hollywood rock, he was a dick and hilarious. Oh, yeah, he was. But you, you're a hamburger? How long have you been in there? Did you <laughs> see the people strut up? Hilarious. Yo, I love that little, ah! <laughs> he did well, the, the screen. And then when, like, when, when he would fly away, the rock would go. <laughs> like you're in a room or a ceiling. What are you doing? <laughs> it worked. And he's like, We seen the rock strudel. No, 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 no. Easy, no, 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 no. big fella. All that leather, I know. Easy. Was, no, I know he was oh, yeah. Bullets, oh, yeah. And then when this dude beat him, I was like, Everybody's like, Oh, the, the one of the biggest objects is Razor Ramon. Wants to slow down. <laughs> word. Slow down because uh, Helms is a good, is a, I'm not saying uh, X Pac is it, but. Helms had held championships. Yeah, He's he was really good. You're bringing scale that back. Yeah, because at um, that point, um, what you think he was a rookie, and Helms was already established. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Come on, come on. Buddy. He had been, he had been your uh, your um, cruiserweight champ a couple of times. So let's uh let's scale that back. 
Now, Santino beating Umaga with popular actually help. I was like, first of all, I don't know who the fuck this guy is. Yeah. <laughs> so good work. That's good work. Word. That's good work. You know what I'm saying? And when Fandango beat uh, Jericho at WrestleMania, that's that's the, the big upset, uh, upset yeah. since uh, yeah. if, whatever. If Jericho understands that you got to build bigger start in your future starts. Yeah. He knows, yo, if I take an L, that's not going to hurt anybody. Him and, yo, him and Randy do it all the time. They go, yo, I understand. If I, if I take an L, I'm still Randy Orton. I'm still Chris Jericho. John Cena never understood that part. He could have nope. put over the Nexus by himself. Bray he Wyatt. Put over yeah. 10 guys alone. Yeah. On Bray Wyatt. He could have put up a whole crew by himself. And twice he decides, fuck these guys. He was going to do it to the Shield. And the Shield was like, nope. Yep. All three of them were like, yo, man, that's not happening to us, bro. The way we came in and what we were doing, you're not doing that to us, bro. Oh, yeah. Three of us. Is, and it's funny because I remember another thing. They said it. They were like, yo, how does it make sense for him to beat us if we've been so, so dominant? That shit make no sense. Why would we? Why would you do that? Yeah. You know saying Seth and yo with Seth and John, they were like yo, that's because Roman, you know, you don't have a lot of say if you haven't been in an industry like that. True. They're like yo, well, it was a last that, minute. Uh, yeah, it was like yo, how would how would that make sense? Yo, we've literally run through everybody you put in front of us. Yeah. Right back, everybody. Why would we lose to cargo shorts? Right now, yeah, yeah like this, it makes sense. Like, yeah, yo, we're still white hot. And we're, you're about to give us a tag team champs in the U.S. champ. We're about to have gold. Don't nexus us, bro. <laughs> Don't nexus us. For real. You know what I'm saying? And luckily, you know, everybody saw the light. They were like, yeah, let's put these guys over. Yep. I, rem- yeah, I remember the story Jericho told with the nexus shit where I think it was with like him and Edge. or Yeah. Yeah, they were like, yo, dude, you got to let him go over. You got to let him go over. And he goes, nope. Mm-hmm. And then right after the match, he walked right up to both and was like, my bad. I should have let him go over. He goes, like, oh, I don't have 50 years of experience in this fucking business. Don't worry about it. <laughs> my man, I've been everywhere and I put everybody over. What the fuck is wrong with you, son? Yeah. <laughs> Came hey. back goes, yeah, you're right. Yeah, no, good call. Yeah. You live, they die, and you learn. Two veterans are letting you know you fucked up in the game. Yep. Locker room leader. Uh-huh. There we go. Idiot. Yeah, man, that... Yeah, it's crazy the shit we can go. Like, wrestling brings us down a rabbit hole. <laughs> and it's, it's amazing how we went from Jeff Hardy to now uh, Liv Morgan. Burial, burial of talent. Yes. I remember one of my favorite things ever, and it's fucked up, man, because he probably could have had an okay future, it was a Mike Knox, Shawn Michaels thing. Ooh. Survivor Series match. Who was that? My man, was he that? kicks him and goes, was he in the match? Who was that? <laughs> you just see him punk and Jeff Hardy like, yo, he's, no, yeah, he's, he's Mike Knox. He's in the match. He goes, who? I don't, I don't know who that is. And all of a sudden he goes, oh, I got to pin him. <laughs> he goes, was, he, was he in the match? I don't remember who he is. <laughs> After that shit, Mike Knox was in ECW and then released. Yep. That shit was literally, it's fucked up, but it was one of my favorite moments because Sean was generally like, I don't know who that is. Who is that? <laughs> uh, hold on. He sent the, he sent the promo. He said to, to cut to uh, 12 minutes and 35 seconds. All right, so let's see. Let's see how this. All right, we got, we got a, a chick sleeping with a cat. I can't skip this. I can't skip this ad. It lasts 50% longer, so you can change it less. There you go. It, it, outstretch. Yeah, beautiful. Welcome back to Monday Night Raw. And we've heard the rumors all day long of the impact. All right. Well, this is the time where we go off the script. Oh, boy. Oh, oh okay. I remember this. I'm still the commercial. Okay, 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 okay. All right. What's your name? Steve. It doesn't matter. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. What's your name? Steve. Oh, there we go. And you are playing Undertaker. Okay, good. What's your name? It's Brother. And you are <laughs> playing Hulk Hogan. Wow. The weed is good in Miami tonight, obviously. <laughs> okay, okay. Now I gotta go to you, because you're my man. Okay, what's your name? John. And you are playing the most handsome son of a bitch on this. Yes! 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 Give me some. Uh, oh, that's a little too much. That's a little too much. <laughs> All right. I saved the best for last. What's your name? 
Rob. And you are playing the Macho Man. That was a horrible fucking set. <laughs> Welcome to Raw. Good. Good to see you. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Okay. This is it. Look at, hey, that's enough. You got to remember, son, this Raw started off that when I wasn't mad. He was just sitting there. Yep. Went to Miami, so they, they love the Rock, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I remember they cut this my shit out. My already on the phone. Oh, my God, look, Rock had me on TV. I put your phone down before I come out, slap the lips off your face. All right, all right. Are you ready for <laughs> WrestleMania? You know what's funny? You know for a fact that The Rock can't really fight. Like yeah. he's legitly like Nakamura can, you know, uh, uh, Alistair Black. Certain people can actually scrap. CM Punk can't clearly. <laughs> 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 you gotta take that cheap shot. You know, some people like you can tell like Roddy Piper could Golden Gloves. You know what I'm saying? Barry yeah. Corbin, Golden True. Gloves also. You know what I'm saying? And then The Rock, I'm like, I will beat your ass. I go. First of all, you gotta catch me. Second of all. I know you don't know how to throw a punch. <laughs> Most of y'all don't. I mean, Shane was just getting his ass whooped by everybody. Yeah, that's true. Your man, uh, your, the other Shinkara, the, the Cholo, that was fucking up everybody back there. Cholo was like, you want some of this girl, bro? Yeah, what, what was his name? I, want, Unico. I don't know. That's what used to call him. Unico. Yeah, Unico. I, yo, I used to come out with, um, with, with Tanga's brother. Oh yeah. It was, yeah. It was a it was a Mexican and a Samoan playing two Mexican vatos. Yep. I was like, yo, he doesn't look like a Mexican. Yeah. And he had the bike. I was yeah, like, yo, that, yeah, this yeah. shit ain't the most stereotypical shit I've ever seen I don't in my life. Remember the Mexicals? True. They had you the fucking lawnmower. Yeah. Three guys coming out of one more that are Mexican with jumpsuits. You now, know there's where the K wasn't silent. <laughs> yo, for real. You know, I don't mind shit like that. If that's who you really are, mm-hmm. you know, like if they really had a cholo from low, from uh, L.A. that was, you know, he wasn't really rocking the fucking uh, the PS thirteen motherfucking shit. But like if he was like from that town and became a wrestler, and was like, yo, this is who I am, and he did the what's up, homes, and that was all natural, beautiful. Go ahead, do your thing. But we don't need you know, fucking Samoan acting like, hey, homes, do you wanna get your shit pushed in? I, I saw training day host. Don't act like I don't know what's happening. Uh, you sit there and go like that. You do realize not everybody's Joker from the next Friday, right? Yo, for real. That's <laughs> what you're going for right now, bro. Yeah. Somebody saw that movie one. Like Scott Hall saw Scarface a million times, but he pulled it off. This dude, yeah. with all due respect, he was good as a, but it was just Tonga's brother that wasn't believable. You know what I'm, I'm sorry. It was supposed to be the muscle, and he's like shorter than everybody else out there at that point. Yeah, I'm like, gotta get bigger muscle, bro. Yeah. Not even. I'm not even gonna get into Kerwin. <laughs> let's, let's not even talk about Kerwin. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, Riddle and Shayna has entered the chat. Well, if they have, state your business. <laughs> Shayna Baszler. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know like, like, come on now. Shit. If anybody enters this chat, know whether if you're famous or not, you know, uh, announce yourself, cuz. Announce yourself, cuz. Word. Cause. All right, so I got a feeling that Gigi's going to be on in 10 minutes. I don't know if she hit up the chat or anything like that, but, you know, she usually comes on around 1030. So she, we got nine. We got nine yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. And this show's going to show up at 12. Yes. He's going to show up at 1158. I told you I would to show up. We should have just told Kenny to come on because I know he has opinions about it. Yo, for real. I mean... Yo, Kenny, you working today? Send links, baby. Right? Shit. But, yo, so we'll get into it. Um, yeah. Off the top of your head, what year was the NWO? What batch of the beach was that? Uh, 90, was it 96, I believe? 96, I, 96, 95, I believe. I think it's 96. I want to say 96. Because I remember right after they started whooping Raw's ass, like bitch slapping them with the rabies. They were all too- Yep, 96. 96, yeah. Yep, Bash of the Beach, 96. Mm-hmm. So I remember that one. Yeah. And, I, I, was, I was watching and I was like, who is he? I didn't care about WCW, but I just want to know. Once I saw Hall and Nash, I was like, yo, who's the other guy? But you know what's funny? People don't forget, he didn't fuck that up. 
He goes, could he be the third guy? You're like, God damn it, Heenan, shut your mouth. True. I know you hate Hogan, but shh. Yeah, because he at that point he was coming down to help. Macho this, man and yeah, thing, yeah. Because yeah, Luger had been hurt. Yeah. Yo, so it was really a tag team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a it was a three on two, but it was perfect for that time. And mm-hmm. yeah, the story behind that was the angle was supposed to be a WWF invasion with Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. But the WWE or WWF at that time sent them a cease and desist order because they were actually using their likeness for, you know, for their show. So they had to scrap that. And then they were like, all right, we're going to do the New World Order, which we all know Eric Bischoff got from Japan. He got that, you know, that faction from Japan and all other shit. But the original third man was supposed to be Sting. Because Hogan found out about it and he's like, oh, well, you know, I don't. I don't think this, you know, turn bad guy, blah, 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 whatever. From Hogan's mouth, he says he goes home. And he's like, if it's not going to be me, it's going to be Sting. And he sits there and thinks like, yo, this could be the biggest thing in the world. I, nah, sorry, Sting. I can't let you get this one. This, this one's mine. You get the next one. I'm in. Hogan turned heel. And yo, that would have been the equivalent to these kids. You, yo, if you, if you weren't alive in 96 and you're watching wrestling, from past 10 years ago to now with John Cena, the John Cena era, or if you just started wrestling now, Hogan turning heel is the equivalent of John Cena turning heel and Roman Reigns turning heel. Because Cena never turned heel, and that's why no one likes him. Be, you know, besides me, I'm, it goes deeper than rap for the, the, the real fans. But when no, no one liked Hogan at that point, Hogan was old news. Hogan was, yo, we're tired of this shit, you know, same old shit type shit in WCW. The same thing as The Rock, but they didn't like The Rock because he was the quintessential babyface. People yeah. hated Roman because they shoved him down their throats. When Hogan went bad, everyone went bad. The fans, after the first two weeks of Hogan cutting a promo with the NWO, everyone loved the NWO. Well, them, she, them t-shirts blew the fuck up once they yeah. introduced him. Yeah. You're awesome. You know, I was like, okay. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Those shoes would be sold out on their sites. Gone. I'm going to get an WO shirt. Impossible. Yep. You had like, to go to the arena to get that one. shit. Impossible, bro. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, um, yo, they took the world by storm, bro. Like, I heard that the original plan before WCW went, went under, but the original plan was, to have Nitro be NWO Nitro and Thunder be WCW Thunder. Because mm-hmm. they wanted to make NWO its own wrestling brand. Naturally, yeah. Kind of like the way the WWE is now with Raw and SmackDown. And to, to just think about that, how that vision was made by WWE at, years after WCW went out of business with the Raw mm-hmm. and SmackDown. They, they sold us brands. But... Imagine NWO, the NWO champion, and the WCW champion. Yep. Way ahead of his time. Word. Way ahead of his time, absolutely. Gigi says he's going to be on in a few. Good okay. call. You see? Good call. <laughs> Chat disconnected. Call. Please wait. We try to reconnect you. Yo, yo, I, I just saw the, the comments you put in the chat. I appreciate you guys. You guys are doing, you guys are doing your thing. What's going on, pimp? I see you. Yeah, man, we didn't have to reset the show. We just had, all we had to do is, uh, hold up, my bad. Um, yeah, all we had to do is wait it out. I had to reset the stream. So like on my end, the recording is going to be in two different recordings, but on your end, it's just seems, it's just going to be like a, I, I think it's gonna be like a little outage for a couple minutes down. But yeah. Uh, let me give these guys the link so uh, they can get back on here. All right, we should be getting back up to normal back in a few minutes now. All right. But yeah, I appreciate uh, the purpose of podcast and, and the call up, Kenny from the call up for uh, handling the chat while we was getting this stuff handled. But this, these are the problems that you have when you watch live when you do a live podcast but yeah so far we oh, the only thing we spoke about was the the formation of the nwo 
and the beginning of it we just we haven't got past the bash of the beach yet hey lay is back in the building everyone yes sir appreciate you coming back <laughs> yeah so i have no idea what happened but uh yeah. i had to unplug my my router and just plug it back in and let everything reset so it uh, should be usual yeah it should be gucci yo that's that's step one if anything doesn't want to work unplug it plug it back in if it doesn't if it doesn't work after that then you know you got problems <laughs> Bird. yeah so um we got to after the third promo with hogan being in that nwo everybody turned nwo and yep. that, yeah and that became one of the biggest things in in wrestling yeah period it was like everybody you know what i'm saying every, every kid was like don't you see that and then they, they all wanted to be thing they all wanted to be down oh yeah you know but, but but the 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 invention of the nwo was like it had to have been the newest freshest way to start some it was because oh, like the four horsemen was just four people who came together in a time and they just you know started rough shop and they just you know banded and they were the four horsemen yeah you know they just formed naturally pretty much like that's mm -hmm. how evolution like evolution was picked and dx was like friends but the nwo it almost seemed like nah this this right here is is the first and only time that this shit's ever gonna happen. Cause I know yep. TNA tried to do it with aces and eights. And as as good as that that shit was, it was no NWO. Mm -hmm. I mean it was good it's good for it was good for them. You yes. know, like yes. For their for like for their budget and everything, it was like you know what I mean? It was good for them. And the fact that Hogan was on the other side of it. I was like, oh, okay, so Hogan's on that side now. Cool. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like when everybody wanted John Cena to join the Nexus. I mean, I was the only person that said no, but, you know, whatever. I'm like, oh, yeah. no, they're good without you. They're good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, um, this dude is has enough charisma for everybody. This is true. Uh -huh. But yeah. it, it would have made no sense for John Cena to join, like, 20 men already. It made sense for Hogan to join those two guys because now he's like the inside guy. And when Eric, when Eric Bischoff joined them, that they even became more powerful. You know, because that's one thing I, I credit is like, yeah, Hogan gave him that third big name, but Eric Bischoff was what gave him that power. Because yeah. without Eric Bischoff, them running the show would have just been them, you know, jumping people left and right. And it was one of those things where that's like that McMahon thing where you didn't realize how much power every bishop actually had because he was just an announcer at one point all of a sudden he's like the ceo and like vice president like i'm you know what i'm saying oh yeah yeah what I, I was telling you before it's like i felt like between both of them that the nwo was more run like a business and dx was like a bunch of adolescent kids annoying yeah. people yeah at most like you know oh we're gonna do stupid shit we're gonna make dick jokes and all this shit and meanwhile, the NWO is like, yo, we're trying to sell pay-per-view shirts. We're trying to take over as a business. Yep. We just want to annoy people. You know what I'm saying? We want to break WCW and take over it. So th that's why I've always been a bigger fan of NWO because it felt more realistic in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like, ah, well, that's, that's a bunch of people piss annoying people. These guys are winning championships and running and running shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Uh, Walter goes, welcome back. I thought Vince and the WWE shut this podcast down. That would piss me off. They gotta do a they gotta do a hell of a lot better than that to try to shut us down. My shit got Wi Fi and I got up to like fifty gigs of server. I'd have streamed on this shit. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> I'd have figured out a way to come back on. <laughs> you ain't holding us down, player. <laughs> we live in New York. Sure. Sure. <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't you don't get this news you that's, don't get this podcast that's, that's right this podcast. if i had to go to school during the, the blizzard of 96 y'all motherfuckers oh, yeah. getting this podcast you know Absolutely what i'm saying correct, yeah. and you could ask anybody else i hit i hit up lay i hit up gg i hit up show and i was like yo listen i'm off today mentally i need y'all to help me out and y'all still try y'all still getting the best i can give you right now because of this podcast yeah. so th this yep. little internet shit i would have got a hamster on a wheel to get this motherfucker rolling i don't was, give a fuck it was it was sean rossap 
Yo, Sean, man, whenever whenever you want to meet up and scrap, bro, I'm down. Yo, for real. I'm down, bro. You're I've I've seen you on other stuff, and I I know you're 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 a little slick with the you're a great promo guy. I'm a great <laughs> in-ring guy. You understand the difference? <laughs> you're gonna sell the pay-per-view. I'm gonna finish it. Oh yeah. Whenever you want it, son, whenever you want it. I gotta see this uh this Bob Ross guy. I gotta see what he's about. Bob I Ross never guy? yeah, I never heard Bob of him Ross until like, yo, just imagine uh just imagine not not say typical wrestling fan, but a dude that literally um how do I say this? A dude like I guess he has he knows people, but he takes that too seriously. You know what I mean? Uh so he, he thinks he's somebody he has a connection like yo, my man. If I kiss enough ass or whatever, I'm getting it, but I just don't give a shit. <laughs> no, yeah, I hear you. I, so I hear you. Things, yeah. But he's a, a lot of these cats are good talkers, son. They ain't about that life. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just throwing it out there. That's you know it, for real. Yeah, you want to you wanna promo battle? I'll, I'll get with you there, but other than that, <laughs> Sean. We, we grew up in an era where you had to talk shit to survive. Absolutely. Absolutely. But Sean, if we go there, same. You have a nice little spot. I like it. You have a nice little chair, but you, that's all you got. But it's all good. You are funny, though. I give you that one. You're, you're pretty funny. <laughs> Both of you are kind of funny and you, and you look at too, but whatever. No, no, no for real. Yeah, he looks. Yeah. I, I never seen him before, but he kind of uh, he, he looks funny. Game, he has SMG. He has oh, SMG. what's going on, Gigi? Gigi? Oh. <laughs> I, I was like, he has SMG? I don't know. I don't know what that is, but fuck it, man. You ain't got no special treatment. You know what you had? Oh, they left. They they cut layout again. I still got in there, no? Uh oh. I still got in there. Am I rolling? Nope. Disconnected again. What happened? You see? All right, we're back. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know what the fuck happened. I don't know what the fuck is going on, to be honest with you, with this shit. Shit's pissing me off. Oh, wait. Yo, Lay. I can't hear Lay because he's not in the ninja. <laughs> Can y'all hear Lay? I can't hear Lay. Lay's not even in my... <laughs> Can y'all hear Lay? I can't hear Lay. Lay's not even in my... I don't know what the fuck is happening, bro. Today is today's one of those days. Today's one of those fucking days. I swear to God, I went up a folder in my... In my fucking computer and everybody's... Everybody's fucking shit up. I don't even know where the fuck I put my shit at. What's going on, Gigi? Yo, this is the second. Uh, here you go. Lay's back. Okay. What's going on, Lay? Chillin', chillin'. All right. Welcome back. <laughs> had to do a little, had a little, little restart it. Well, yeah. Had, had, had to go back to the ninja thing. I started watching the, 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 the thing to see if I was still on, and I was like, yo, I see you talking. And I'm like, yo, you're not in the ninja. <laughs> like, how are you <laughs> on the stream talking? And it's like, damn, I just wanted to play this one. Your life. Bing bong. That's all I wanted to do. Fuck your life. Fuck your life. That's it. <laughs> I wanted to make those sound bites. I haven't got a chance to make them yet, but I got the video. But holy shit. Once again, yeah, I'm not going to scare us by doing this little shit where my internet goes out. Kiss my ass. Yeah, we use a ninja. The, the link should be. A... No, you didn't miss it, Gigi. We, we haven't. We just started speaking about the NWO. So we, we, we spoke about Jeff Hardy. Uh, we spoke about other wrestlers that went through rehab, the stuff with John Moxley. And then we spoke about Liv, Liv Morgan should get a, a rematch. And then we went over, uh, you know, Drew McIntyre losing all those other people. You went down that rabbit hole in the house. Yeah. We, we would say, I expected you to be on at 1030. And at 1030, my shit fucked up. So <laughs> we haven't been able to get uh, NWO yet. You trying to log on? 
There's no password. He's going to be a, a DX fan. It's of the strength of Sean. Yeah. Uh, I sent it's, the... It's being, it being his baby. Word. I sent the link again on the Instagram, so... Yo, Denise come to Coney Island, take me... <laughs> take a spin on the Cyclone. Yo, I like the Cyclone, bro. What's you talking about Denise Salcedo? I don't know. I'm assuming that's, I'm assuming that's who he's talking about. Probably. You know what I'm saying? But she's she's a, she she she, she kind of coming up. She don't drink or anything, so I'm like, nope. uh, no parties for you, buddy. No slipping the Mickey's. What what's her name? Denise what? Denise Salcedo. Oh, she still can't see you. Who what? Wait, is she a wrestler? How do you spell her last name? I have no idea. Kenny probably knows. Yo, Kenny, how do you spell this girl's last name? Nah, Williams, I'm dealing with fucking Otis. The niece is a combo. Why is she a combo? What's going on, Williams? Uh, yeah. What's up, I don't know. The niece of the Kim K and Kanye of Coney Island. Just put a, you could put a wrestling personality and put Denise and you're probably she'll come up. I'm trying to see. There you go. A uh, uh, pro, pro wrestling podcast did it. Oh, I thought it was Al Sado. No, Sal Sado. Okay. Salsa. Okay. Oh, this yeah. chick. I never seen her before. I don't know who. Yeah. She's she's she does podcasts and shit. Yeah, yeah, she does a wrestling. She 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 always be on. She has her own, but she be on the wrestle talk, and I, I watch them guys sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and the hump yeah, type yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But she has her own thing, and so does Shauna Sean Rash Sap. That dude, him too. Let me see what this fucking dude looks like. <laughs> see, you know what I'm saying? You know what? I'm saying? what? Huh? This is this is the dude that told you to log off and fuck and shut the fuck up, <laughs> bro. Wrestling podcast. That's a that's a keyboard warrior, son. The definition of one. Wow. Wow. Yo, you know what's funny? This this looks like a kid that when we grew up, he didn't watch wrestling, but now he does. <laughs> Yeah, he like, got into it late. Yeah. Like his 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 favorite wrestler has to be the hot guy wins. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, there goes Gigi. What's going on, Gigi? I'm here. Hello. My, my bad. So I was shit, you know, made it. Word. How you feeling? I know last week he was so I feel like there's, I, I feel like I have Yoko Zuna sitting on my chest right now. Oh shit! Like that's that that's not over exaggerating. That's like legit. Mm. I have like massive. On buns I drop. Buns you, You're using your webcam, uh, Mike. I just requested for you to use the, the Yeti. I thought it was on the Yeti. Oh, that's the, the my thing is just fucking up here because it could be every me. once in a while. <laughs> no. It's the video source that it automatically switched to my default camera. So out my video cuts in and out. See, like now. Yeah. I don't know why my video just cut in and out for no reason. And it just said disable video. And then it brought me back. So mm -hmm. this this shit is acting all so kinds right of funky. The Wi-Fi shit oh shit's so service right now. All that shit is fucking up. The word, yo, they Jesus really Christ. they really don't want to know who's better, DX or uh, NWO. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, <laughs> you, you, I, I heard you guys uh, went ahead and discussed Jeff Hardy. Yes. And his departure. Um. I don't know about how I feel about this because I I said it uh, before. I I feel like this was his way of doing it to himself. In order for him to get out of the contract, 
you know? Yeah. I I, I don't want to say that it is, you know, maybe God forbid he, he went right back into, you know, he relapsed again. That would suck. Um, And I hope he gets all the help that he can get if he really is truly like this. But I feel like this was a chess move on his piece, on his end. To just get out of WWE whichever way possible because, you know, they extended his shit. And then he had to sign. And it, you can tell, like, people are just not happy anymore being there. Yeah, I could definitely see that. So, you know, it, uh, Matt tweeted out that his brother is just fine. You know, so I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past him to go ahead and upplay this. Just for him to get out of his contract with WWE. I guess you That's how I feel. Yeah, we'll show up in April on some. It's Willow. <laughs> you imagine that? He's been wanting to do Willow for a long time, so. And they've just been cutting and they've been telling him no. Mm-hmm. They don't like want to do it. The whole part of his deal to come back is he, he gets his original theme song and he's able to do Willow. And his big thing was to do Willow against the Fiend. That that would have been so. I like. I didn't catch much of that in TNA, but just I know the the elite shit was big, and just to have it in WWE is like, yo, this shit can be even bigger. Nope, psych. This is where <laughs> we need the we need the show button. This nope, nah, we kill shit that That's happens. That's true. And then when they did do it, they didn't do it well. They didn't do the deletion well at all. You know, yeah. it, it didn't feel organic. As it once did. It's funny because the crowd understood it. The writers mm-hmm. did. The crowd Correct. completely understood what was going on. The writers didn't at all. You know what I'm saying? Or the showrunners the, either. The crowd it knew was, what it was when wrestling. they came out for WrestleMania as a surprise tag team. That after they what? dropped the ROH titles. It was funny, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? And the crowd went delete, delete. And then Matt had to hold himself back because he yeah. knew that he was still was legally mm-hmm. was about to do that. he did it like once or twice and he was like wait yeah, I can't right. do it yeah, yeah. it's all right I, I I believe that this was possibly a power move from Jeff like god damn it I didn't want to have to do this I'm gonna have to do it we have no <laughs> you're fired cool word bruh bruh I'll see you in 90 days <laughs> Yo, for real. Um, you're gonna hear next week. They saw Jeff Hardy in the back talking to Matt. Yo, yep. as long as you're in the back and you're not in the ring, you're good. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. As long as you're not on TV, bro, you're not breaching the contract. Like, look, at one point, the Briscoes was backstage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Briscoes have been, they've literally been backstage and Matt Taven for like about four shows now. Are they going to be signed? Because don't they have controversy on them? The Briscoes? Yeah, it's, the, it's, the, it's the, dude, it's the Briscoes, man. They they got that old school Delaware stupid, like a uh, gay bashing shit and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, but it's, it's who they are, bro. That's part of their thing. Yeah. They tweeted out some fucked up shit, and I'm like, all right, still p- pushing them. They were still pushing Jay when he said some crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? That's when, that's when Jay Lethal beat him. Jay Briscoe? Yeah. Huh? Okay. I mean that that would that would have been something to bring up during your uh debate pro wrestling podcast, the, the Briscoes and their gay bashing. Cause remember, you know, they were spo- they were talking about uh should you bring the their problems to light, you know, yeah, to the light the I think that's that's still way too of a sensitive subject to like touch on. The fact that they announced that Tony Storm is by and yet never allude to it again lets you know how sensitive it is. Mm-hmm. You know, Wait, like Tony you mentioned, oh, it was just a just for a gay pride. Oh, she's bisexual. All of a sudden, gone. Tony Storm is bi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Juice Robinson is a lucky man. I guess so. Yeah. You know, to to me, like, all right, you know, it's to me, it's not important their sexual orientation. No, it, it, it as long as you're a wrestler, you're a wrestler. Whatever you decide to do in the privacy of your own home, that's up to you. You know what I'm saying? You want to be bi, tri, quad, whatever you want to do, that's up to you. Good, to go. God bless you. But in the ring, I would appreciate it if you you know did the moves correctly and didn't waste the time. Other than that, <laughs> and I got killed like that botch we saw. Yo, for yo, Gigi, I don't know if you you probably didn't see it, but 
Pro Wrestling Podcast sent us a, a video of this dude doing like a triple moonsault and landing straight on his neck. Mm. Yeah, man. I don't understand these botch ass moves sometimes. Like, what were you thinking? <laughs> How? You can tell if you, you can knew tell you were, if if you knew you had a shred oh, of a man. doubt that you know <laughs> what this might not go, but fuck it, don't do it. You're gonna die. Word. You know who kills me all the time with oh, that shit? Man. Fucking Shotzi Blackheart. Yeah. She she she's <laughs> one that fucking. She takes more fucking shots to the head and breaks her back and suicide dies. Her fucking, I don't know. She be crazy like sometimes. Shotsy. Keep that helmet on. Shotsy. Just keep the helmet on. Keep the helmet on. Yo, and, and give that helmet to Sasha when she jumps out the ring too. Cause Word. Big e. Yeah. Big e. Yeah. I'll be like, yo, baby's going to break his neck today. It's going to happen. Yeah. It was cool the first time we did it, but you don't need to do it every fucking time, bro. Bro, like, like me and me and Lay was talking. Ric Flair wants to die in the ring, and I don't uh, think yeah, anybody no, wants I to see that. that. I don't think anybody wants. To, I don't want to. He see doesn't it. die in his bed. He's gonna die in the ring, wrestling. And the person he wants to do it with is with I think Sammy Guevara. Yeah, he told me that. I was like, yo, first of all, that's oh, random. Holy shit. By the way, yeah. that's mad random. Sammy Guevara is one of the most random names to throw out there. I would have, yo, you would have told me, give me a hundred guesses. I would never guess Sammy Guevara. They must have went I out like, drinking. Then, uh, the American Dragon, CM Punk, maybe MJF, great promos. I can imagine him and Flair, uh, Seth, Roman, Undertaker. You know, I'm like, all right, who do you want to go out wrestling? Sammy Guevara. What? Did you just yeah. take that shit out of your ass? They must have went out drinking and Sammy got drunk and must have been like, yeah, fuck it, I'll kill you in the ring. <laughs> I don't have it. a problem killing you in the ring. Fuck it. Oh my God. We'll do it live. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry, G. Um, who did you who did you have a pair? I think me and Vince pretty the consensus was pretty much NWO. Yeah. For two very different reasons. I think for two different reasons, but yet you're like, I get it. So I'm with you guys with NWO as a faction. Uh, Shawn Michaels is my man. He is my favorite wrestler. However, NWO was a menace. You know, they 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 are the legit ones to take over prior to NXT anything take over. Okay. Um, DX had great moments, but they were funnier. They were sure. there for the com the comic skits. However, I will not, I repeat, I will not go ahead and just say NWO won because at the end of the day, everybody was NWO. That was my, yeah, I think that was everybody's biggest pet peeve problem is that Even after a while, WCWs, <laughs> Locker room was no longer WCW, was NWO. But it was but, it was it was Goldberg and Glacier left. Yes, <laughs> Goldberg and but Glacier left. You, you do know that the plan was to have Monday Night Raw be NWO Raw. I mean NWO Nitro, and Thunder was going to be WCW Thunder. That's why they grew yeah. it as big. It just never went to fruition. But it never it never went that way because they because you have Vince Russo. Yeah, um, that was the major catalyst of them falling. That that was a big a big ass fucking reason. Um, because at the end of the day, DX won the war. You know, as as to which one had outlasted the other, and and you have to give it to DX on that on its own. And they created moments because you wouldn't have someone that's outstanding as the ninth wonder of the world, China. You know, if they had that in NWO, that would have hit big was, time. But instead, y'all had WCW had Asia. Remember her? Yeah, but she was with the big bad booty daddy. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And and remember, the first lady of NWO wasn't even Asia. It was Miss Elizabeth. That's true. Because yeah. she came in trying to get Rancho Man Randy Savage to join in. You know, um, but that's when they were growing. We gotta think about we gotta think about Hogan, Nash, and Scott Hall and what they solidified first as what NWO is. 
you know, because that if it wasn't for those three men to set off such a, a revolution, because not only did we get NWO from this, we got LWO, we got uh, BWO, we got mm-hmm. so uh, so many other BWOs and uh, something WOs, you know, it always kind of rebrand. You can never rebrand DX. You know what I mean? Think True. about it. And what? not to say rebrand yeah. per se, but there's only... See, this is why I'm always kind of hard, like kind of taken. I, for me, I've always NWO for life. You know, always, always, always fucking around with the click. You know, I don't have a um, DX shirt. I, you know what's so funny? I have my DX shirt, but my NWO shirt, I have no idea where the hell it's at. So I wore the NWO <laughs> shirt for Major <laughs> World Order. <laughs> Because I got something that represents somewhat of the logo, and that's right. what I mean by that. NWO is so amazing. It's over 25 years now, and people are still talking about it. Same thing for DX, you know. Um, but there was, like I said, DX was more on the funny, funny, haha side. Let's make fun of Sergeant Slaughter. Let's embarrass him with his chin and his spit. You know, they were more for the comic relief that was there and you know you know to be honest with you i think the only reason why the dx was as cool as the nwo at least in the beginning was because bret hart and the hart foundation did not have enough charisma to go with them yep and we spoke about that okay. yesterday like, yes. you know part of it you know what i'm saying like yo bret hart had no charisma no promo skills he was supposed to be the good guy and get should, over on that one he should have let owen talk yeah. Word. Owen Bryan. Owen's great on the mic. Your promos. Owen and Brian. What the fuck? Yeah, uh, you back. But yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, you you see what I'm saying though? It's not you. It's just a stupid thing over here. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. Brad should have never for the Heart Foundation when they were going up against them, like before making the name of D Generation X, Bret Hart was the one that gave them the names. You bunch of degenerates. Yeah. Okay, cool. We're going wrong with that. Mm-hmm. We're degenerates. D Generation X on top of that. Um, one thing that DX never had that NWO had, their own pay-per-view. Well, no, their they, own had, they had they had referee. One. Oh they had, no! They didn't. Did, in your heart, the, break it down. They had. They had the yeah, but it wasn't a they full. They had something that named after them, but was it all full DX members no. only in matches? Right. Yeah, right. NWO no. had their own like NWO, NWO referee had... rules, wrestlers. So uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Every they had their own NWO ring. True. Yeah. The apron itself was all NWO. The turnbuckles was NWO. The ropes was. Black and white. Sweet. Yeah. The best DX had was the entrance with a skinny ass D and an X. It's funny because Pro Podcast goes, they had the better and the strippers. The entrance team. I was like, I don't like, no, I don't. Yeah. The, the, it used to be a huge a, 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 a fan of that because it was simple. Everybody could come out to it, no matter how corny you were. Oh, yeah. You could come out to that song and kind of look cool. Yeah. We are so, in control. Yep. Jimmy Hendrix in general is fucking cool. We're oh, yeah. coming out to Jimmy motherfucking Hendrix. That was, that was Hogan. All yeah, right, yeah. not yeah. some no next unknown next fucking month. rock person. Mm-hmm. All right, that made a good song, a, a song that made sense for that day and age. You know, I still don't get me wrong. I still listen to the D Generation X song. I still listen to the NWO song. You know, I, yeah. I listen to Jimmy Hendrix fucking entrance and everything. I, I think it's is dope mm-hmm. you know but as what was cooler for me nwo the only thing that started killing is when they again when they started basically making their whole roster from wcw to fucking nwo <laughs> that's really, yeah. that's their downfall really see that's where their downfall began and that's where dx rose you know to like to take that you know not nah, because if the one thing I liked about DX over NWO is that they always kept it kind of small. Yeah. There was two incarnate, well, three incarnations kind of, of, T- of DX. 
Right. Because it was it was uh, but the Sean, logo Triple H, the China. Same. Yeah, and then when Sean left, Triple H recruited X Pac and and the New Age Outlaws, and that was it. Mm-hmm. And that's after, and that was after he came back from WCW. Yeah, because he yeah. was in WCW during the whole NWO. Yep, he was one of the first people that actually got in with uh, Kevin and Scott. You know, when he was when he got in, no more one two three kid. Yep, that's it. No more six pack. six. <laughs> Even though he didn't have one, but it was nice. It was nice. I, I've always loved the fact that I, I said it before that the NWO was run as a business, not yeah. a bunch of adolescents being dicks. Yeah, you, mm-hmm. they, they weren't annoying people. They were fucking destroying people and taking over the company. You, that was my was my whole thing. It you, wasn't like Sean and Triple H were just annoying everybody. You know you what? I, you know what I liked about um, the NWO the most was that even though half the roster was in NWO, everyone was still their own version of themselves in the NWO. Like the outsiders, they came as the people that were from the other company. That came to take over shit, and they were the best tag team in WCW. And Hogan was Hogan, but not wearing black and black and white. Macho Man was the Macho Man. He just did the madness shit. Scott Steiner turned into the big bad booty daddy in the NWO. Conan got his actual shine because I think that was some of the best work Conan ever did on the mic and even in the ring. I agree. You know, there was a bunch of people that got. TV time. Like, Disco Inferno was going nowhere, but he had TV time because he wanted to join the NWO. Remember that? Yep. And then, I remember that. Mm. That was one thing. Besides the NWO, the greatest thing in WCW was the Cruiserweights. But, like, the NWO, they really helped WCW. Yeah. They were going yeah. nowhere. I agree. It was NWO that helped put WCW more on the map. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they WCW recruited you know, your Hogan's, your Machos, you know, all 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 the ones that left WWF to come to WCW. You know, you have all those, but now when you add in faces that faces that we, the wrestling community, all know as yo, that's Razor Ramon, that's Diesel. What are they doing on WCW? And then that's when reality kicked in. Like, oh shit, his name is Scott Hall. Yep. His name is Kevin Nash, and shit just hit the fucking fan. Yeah, and it felt real. Like when I remember when mm-hmm. I heard, like, hold on, wait, they're using their real names. Is WCW mm-hmm. real and WWE's fake? Like that went mm-hmm. through my head because I was a kid. Mm-hmm. It was like WCW is real. <laughs> it's like this, it's not no fake shit like in, in right. WWE. It's not fake. And then it, it didn't help WWE at that time when they decided to bring back Diesel and Razor Remote and they gave us the fucking joke. Yeah. That they gave us, you know, on Raw. That was like what that now I think I, I honestly believe I think that was the first time as a fan, even at a young age, I felt completely insulted. <laughs> it's like Word. how dare you insult my intelligence and play with my emotions you asshole it, it didn't help that with their with their nwcw they pretty much have the same wrestling gear just in different colors yeah same ass gear is just like oh now it's black and red because mm-hmm. of the young you know what i'm saying and you're like Word. wait but those two guys over there the one that's not brolic like scott hall at all and then kane yeah kane <laughs> With a, with a bad dye job. What's going on here? What is this? Uh, yep. yeah. or, or at that, that point, Isaac Yankum. Yankum. Isaac Yankum is due. Is, is Kevin Nash? What? But the funny part is, Jail goes, yo, Diesel and Razor Ramon coming back. I was like, okay. Listen. And then we got Diesel and Razor Ramon. We didn't get Scott Hart and Kevin Nash. Nope. I was like, you know what? He's right. We yeah. got the characters. Yeah. I was we got the characters, like, but that's not what we want. No, not at all. Oh, yeah. It's funny, that was JR that did it too. They were trying to make JR heal. That's crazy. That's how desperate they were. Yeah. And then they fucked up. WCW made JR heal. Remember they got that dude to play him? That, that fake uh, yeah, yeah. Memphis. Uh, yeah, he was Minnesota one of the writers dude? for WWE that he went over to think. Ah. Uh, yeah. 
but they were kind of classless because they made fun of his Bell Palsy. Yeah, yeah. I was like, you guys are, you guys are pieces of shit. That's bad. Yeah. I was going to say, that just, was some of the worst shit the they gear, ever did. Yeah, but just has the gear, that's cool. But if you're going to do that fucking lip curling, you're a piece of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Too. yeah. I, I knew it was over. When I saw Kurt Hang in the NWO, I go, why is Mr. Perfect here? <laughs> that's why it was over. Not yeah. even Virgil. Mr. Perfect. I was like, what? No, this is not right. But, yo, some of the best things that came out of that NWO was we got to see Scott Norton. You know, yeah. Scott mm-hmm. Norton, Buff Bagwell. That. You know, there was a bunch of people. That was the perfect way to get Stevie Ray to go single, to go singles or to, to break away from Booker T. Booker T. You know? I agree. Because uh, DDP became a master star for not ever joining them. True. And he knew Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. Like, Yep, they're friends. Like, hey, like, yo, I know these guys. We came up together. He was like, and hey, I go, fuck you guys. I'm WCW. <laughs> yep, yep. It was if it wasn't Sting, it was always DDP. Oh yeah, one of them. And right? you, if it wasn't for the fact that they fucked up that whole shit with Bret Hart and Starcade, where a homeboy counted the three yeah. legitimately, and Bret Hart had to come back and, oh yeah, did it too fast. Like, bro, it took me twenty seconds to count that three. What are you talking about? When they did that fuck up, that's when it that's when it all went downhill. That's when it was like, all right, hold up. This shit's fake. You botched the shit out of Sting winning the title. Cause Sting at that point at that point became Undertaker. Mm-hmm. Sting became the WCW Undertaker. Mm-hmm. Kind of kind of kind of mix it with a little, with, little bit with your Stone Cold, because remember Stone Cold's fighting both DX and the Heart Foundation. True. Yeah. He would have random tags as far as like the Legion of Doom and Ahmed Johnson. There would always be him in the middle of it. Like, fuck all of you guys. It's just me. When Hello Boricuas and DOA and all that <laughs> yep, shit. Yep. Yep. He was like, I, mean, I still remember that bro where he goes, he relies on one man. He's by himself. He doesn't have a faction or a crew. So, in other words, they call everybody else a bitch ass. Word. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and he always kept that uh, sticky note in his back pocket. He, yes. got, he and, got fired. And he, had the, and he had the shorts and the boots, which threw me off because the boots were like <laughs> like thigh high almost. They're like, yeah. they were really high. They were ankle high. And I'm like, yo, what? Dude, put on pants. <laughs> yeah, right? Tight ass shorts, yeah. too. But you know what? Fuck yeah. it. That's Stone Cold. He do whatever he wants. I, I just always thought it was like when I think about impact, I'll give it to the NWO every day, all day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But because it, it, it like I said, in retrospect, Japan led to the NWO, NWO led to Bullet Club, you know? So yeah. there's that. And DX, they, Triple H led them. Then they got the, the New Age Outlaws. Then they got X-Pac. And like Gigi pointed out perfectly, they kept it tight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They didn't well, take Ken Shamrock in The Rock and say, come on, guys, put on green gear. And when, even when they had Kane, he never had like a green gear. He was just like, and he knows the DX guys. Yeah, I'm here for uh, yeah, I'm here for Tori. Yeah, cool yeah. But you still can't. You ain't right. You ain't one of us. Word. You ain't down us. Yeah. You're not one of us. <laughs> and and I think that was the perfect thing for the Ninja Outlaws. Yeah. Perfect. I couldn't. I couldn't see Road Dog and Billy Billy Gun doing anything more outside of DX. Like they That's tried. Right. They tried. Billy Gun went nowhere when he went on his own. The Rock. Made sure of that the rock eviscerated him on Sunday Night Heat. How you get eviscerated on Sunday Night Heat? <laughs> on Sunday Night Lord. Heat, you yeah. got eviscerated on a show that almost nobody watches. But yo, know, if you think about it, besides mankind, and that could be a latest says Mike Tanay making the announcement. But beside mankind, who did DX make outside of DX? DX DX had a very good. Thing elevating Bret Hart to a heel, and it was it wasn't it on purpose either. Like you said, it was the fact that Bret sucked on the mic, and they were good on the mic. And then you have these. This is the point where. You and then you like have that, that legit heat between yeah. Bret and Sean already, so mm-hmm. that just kind of made it. You know, it just made it feel more real because we all know that there's always this is this this forever feud between Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. Yeah, and you got these kids that are like they're sick of like the '80s wrestling. Brett was literally coming off the cuff for that. Yeah, like, you know we want something, we want something edgy. The music was edgier. All that time you know, have Nirvana and all that. Everything was coming 
on the cuffs of that. So anything that was edgy and you were like disrespectful, you don't care about authority. It was it was literally a perfect storm, both with the NWO and DX. It's like you're anti-authority. Stone Cold was the same way. You're anti-establishment. Mm-hmm. You're literally. They tell you we have tradition. They go fuck your traditions. We don't care about that shit. We're doing our thing. So it was literally. You couldn't get it more perfect between the music, and I'm talking about music in general and the way people were feeling, kind of dejected. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It just it made perfect sense. Kids were like, "Yo, I can I can somewhere I can relate to these guys. Oh, they don't like the older guys. Fuck the older guard. We're new. We're trying to be cool now. And yeah. It made perfect sense. They we don't like everybody. We don't like rules and regulation. <laughs> they don't like rules and regulation. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He goes, Yo, they, they tell the guys to they suck want, it. They want perfect." This is the best thing about this time during wrestling. You had, you know, the fraction of NWO and you had kids saying too sweet. And then you had that other side of the kids that motherfucking camera. <laughs> yeah, see, <laughs> camera, man, the camera, man, suck it. That's it, you know. <laughs> you and and you can do that to that anyone. <laughs> Yo, it was beautiful, see? Um, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it was amazing. Just, it was it was um, a moment, man. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Um, nowadays, a lot of people take from that NWO with the Bullet Club. How much stuff do you see being taken from DX? Maybe the edgy uh, uh promos. Cause that was all yeah. DX. That that was DX way yeah, before. Yeah, they were definitely pushing the envelope in what was considered raunchy and disrespectful. And you know, they're like, oh, you can't say that on TV. He goes, well, I already did. Yeah, what you gonna do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna say worse. They they so did they did their, take their that promos got to that point. Yeah, they did take that a step further than than the NWO did in their promos. Mm-hmm. But I do think the NWO became a culture. You know, I think the NWO did more physically instead of just like with promo stuff. The NWO literally would come in, beat the shit out of people, and leave through the crowd. And everybody loved that. That they would come through what the crowd. What just happened? I don't know. <laughs> Am I here? Yes. Am I here? You're here now, yes. <laughs> oh, wait. I froze on my screen. God, I, I, I see myself. And then I go. <laughs> like, there we go. It was nice knowing you guys for the night. Oh, I'm back. Oh, back again. I came back. <laughs> back again. Oh my god. See, I told my camera to suck it, and then the whole shit was like, "No, well, go fuck yourself." Goes, then. <laughs> no, you suck it. My, you suck it. My internet did that shit to me before you came on. Yep, yeah, Yo. you said you're not called an NWO. <laughs> Word. It's like you want you feel like shit. Well, you know what? Fuck you too, anyway. <laughs> Word. I feel like shit too. Fuck this. Oh, oh yeah. man. Damn. Uh, what a uh, fucking day. You know, it's Thursday. You know what that means? Everything right? and everything's gonna get fucked up. That's technical oh <laughs> technical issues Tuesday Word. Thursdays. <laughs> Word. The funny oh, part about, about both things is all the guys in except for Hogan were friends. Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, you know the click. Yep. Mm-hmm. They were just doing their version of it on different brands, and they're like, I remember once I, I saw an interview with Kevin Nash. He goes, "Yo, I called Sean. He goes, "Yo, you guys doing over there, killing it." He goes, well, "You guys too? Shit is dope." <laughs> like, yo, yo, that's. Yo, he was like, yo, same shit, different sides. And then I and then, wish. It was like, no, no, it's different. It's I oh, yeah. wish that yeah, as cool. fans of that generation, that they as they as in WCW wouldn't let DX in on that day of the invasion. Yeah. Oh man, and that would have been. That would have been. Let him in. That would have been the true definition of the forbidden door. Do you? Did you hear okay. what? Did you hear what Triple H said about that? He was talking about. He was like, 
yo, Kevin Nash told Eric Bischoff, open up the gate. And really? Triple H was like, we would have had nothing for them. Like, if they would have <laughs> opened up the gate, we would have been able to do nothing. Like, we would we would have literally been there stuck. Like, uh, what do we do now? We was expecting y'all to stay there. That's why it was like, Kevin Nash was like, go ahead, open it up. Let's see what they got. Because mm -hmm. they would have had a whole locker room waiting for these niggas. And there was four of them. Like, um, we would have just had to stand here like bitches. <laughs> Dude. As they roll in in their Jeep, not a tank. Yeah. <laughs> when I came in a tank, I go, that was a Jeep. Yeah. I don't know if you know what a tank Jeep. looks like. Rusev came out that of a tank. That wasn't a tank. Yeah. Rusev. Rusev. Tank. <laughs> All right. Shasi Blackheart, a Jeep. That's a mini. Well, that's, a tank. <laughs> that's a baby truck. Word. <laughs> that's a hot Word. wheels. Bitch. Yo, but that would have been great. Because then you just would have had the standoff between NWO and DX and just have like your main NWO guys. Yeah. You know, eventually they're all going to come in and, you know, kick some ass and shit like that. But I think they were more afraid of the fans that were following them behind, behind yeah. DX than anything else. Is it, as we know, you know what I'm saying? the fans are stupid. <laughs> Fans are extremely fucking stupid. <laughs> Word. Oh man, that nigga dumb. You got part of the blood. Y'all saw, yeah. saw the video afterwards you saw too when he got said? out. Yeah. yeah. Like oh, I'm part of the Same. bloodline. I go, you buy one shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> now you're now you're Samoan. I Yo. did it for Roman. I did it for The Rock. I did it for Rikishi. It's, it's yeah. I did it for The Rock. Shut <laughs> up, thought weren't fatty. <laughs> Yo, speaking of that, real quick, um, mm. Ric Flair and I think Chavo Guerrero and mm. Eric Bischoff both all said that uh, Seth Rollins was a pussy for not fighting back or saying that he was scared. It was like some... Well, in all honesty, nowadays... Seth Rollins did the right thing. Back in the day, mm -hmm. it would have fucked him up, threw him out in the back. No one have been the wiser. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, he touches that kid. That kid sues the WWE for life, and he's now he owns the WWE. Not necessarily yes, because yes, the kid attacked Seth always. first, so Seth can basically say he's fighting um, in self defense. And they can't say anything because they there's literal literally evidence of the guy attacking Seth Rollins first. No, so no, I, I hear you. You know, I I agree with you. No, oh, yeah. But at the same, I'm not calling. I'm not gonna call him pussy for not hit. I oh, think no. he did the you know the smartest decision. But if he were to have swung at him, he wouldn't have been at fault. He wouldn't have been suspended. He wouldn't even have been fined because the guy literally fucking speared him down. Yeah, but like for you know? for a guy like me, anyone could have spin that shit racial. You know what I'm saying? He only did that because he's a black guy. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like anybody nowadays, everything is racist. Racist. Right. I would have been like, I thought that was Biggie. Yeah, I you honestly know, thought I it was Biggie. Storyline. I thought Vince changed the story at the back. Yeah. <laughs> then no, nobody tells like, me anything. Uh, is that Biggie? No, it's not Biggie. What's that? <laughs> Yo, let's be real. We all thought that at first. Yeah. Like, yo, that's Biggie coming out. Oh shit, no, it's not. That's a fan. Even Brian Saxon. Biggie's well, can't fit. Biggie's I don't yeah. think she cracked. Brian <laughs> Brian Saxon, he was like, Oh, that's Big and, and he stopped mid sentence. It, yeah, he's like, Is that Big E? The fact you know what bothers me is that they don't acknowledge it while they're on air. Like, yo, just continue. Just gonna like nope. That's a fan, because if, if it was, let's just say when JR and, like, the King or, or even JR and Vince at one point, when the fan came out, they were like, well, a fan came out. Well, kids shouldn't be trying this at home, yeah, you know? They, like, they, they acknowledged it back then, but now it's like, oh, I can't believe nobody saw it. Like, don't yeah. keep it hush-hush. It's like, it's like the elephant in the room. What the fuck? Yo, this, yo, I don't know what's going on with my laptop today. I, I don't want to blame my laptop. I'm going I'm to blame this ninja shit. This ninja shit acting yeah, up on it's, me. It's me. It's me. It's, it's got to be. Yeah, it's got to be me. It's got to be me. <laughs> it's show for not showing up. Yo, for he he still has uh, 31 minutes to show up. And I we have a bet. I think at 11.57, 
He's gonna be like, "Hey guys, I made it home. I told you I'm I was saying, gonna be here." I'm saying twelve. <laughs> right when we sign on, you saying twelve? Cut the, cut the feed. Yeah, we're gonna go. Hey, we're gonna go. It's over. Yep. Oh man. He wanted to jump in when we had no internet, but he couldn't. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> That's yeah. what he's gonna say. I was watching, but then you guys cut off on me. I don't know well, what happened. The podcast said it was me, guys. It was me all along. Yo, I was the consortium. <laughs> do, do me, do me a favor. I watched that that clip right, and I got as upset as I did when it first happened. A lot. I was so fucking pissed. I was like, because <laughs> it was supposed to be Christopher Daniels. Mm-hmm. That's what was going to be the higher power. I'm Christopher trying Daniels, to the way he talks. Yeah. On the mic, Christopher was, yo, and the way he wrestles, do it. The fallen angel. All of a sudden, I see McMahon and I was like, fuck this kid. <laughs> Damn. If son. I could have flipped my bed, I would have. I would have been on to. Shit. Oh, my God, son. I'm sorry. I just reminded me. It, it's a trigger yeah. for me. Oh, it's yeah. yeah. I hear you. I hear you. But yeah, I don't. I don't think. I don't think he was a was a was a pussy for that. Now, now, if the guy fucking tackled Seth Rollins and started pounding on him and put him in a chokehold, and Seth Rollins didn't do nothing back, then I'm like, all right, hold on, wait. You know, yeah, something man, else. You have to. De- you have to defend yourself, son. But but Rollins did kind of like put oh, him no, in he that. Held him. Yeah, he held him, yeah, yeah. He got him in the in the 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 the, the headlock choke. You know that front, you know the front, you know, the front uh, bulldog choke, and mm-hmm. like held them down for the refs to come get them off. You know what I'm saying? But also mm-hmm. another thing, COVID. You can't take that chance. <laughs> he sure. starts kicking this kid, and this kid fucking like spits on him, or whatever the fuck. You know, we don't know what we got. And, and then on top of everything else, Seth just had a kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he had a, yo, his, he had like, I was saying this thing about Moxley and Jeff Hardy's like, yo, you different people think different ways. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. And Seth is in the middle of a, of an angle right now. <laughs> yeah. Literally right in the smack middle of a WWE championship angle. So it's like, yo, if I, can I, am I going to risk all that to take some shots at this kid? Yeah. Which you can, but it's like, that doesn't make any sense. I fuck around and injure myself fucking around with this kid. Yeah. You know what I mean, I can't like, yo, that's stupid. Let me hold him down. Security comes. I'm like, all right, we're good. Instead of me risking fucking put, tearing my MCL, <laughs> and then I'm out for like a half a year, a year and a half. Yeah. Sure. But you know, you know what's crazy? I spoke to my boss a long time ago about um, about fighting, right? Because mm-hmm. you know, at one point I was pissed off at somebody. I was like, yo, what if I just you know clocked him? He's like, oh, you get fired. I was like, but what if he jumped me and I was defending myself? She goes, well, you still get fired because technically you're fighting. You literally have to just stand there and get your ass kicked and not throw anything, and, and you, you that way you won't get fired. But when you start fighting back, I'd have been like, I'd be like, yo, listen, with all due respect, like, no, as a human being, I'm not gonna stand there and get my ass handed to oh, me. No, yeah, you're firing me. It's just that's just the fact. <laughs> but just look up. I'm gonna get as fired. Soon as, <laughs> as soon as you're done, you're like, I'm gonna start applying to different spots right now. Yeah, I put. I'll turn into Ric Flair real quick. Fire me. I'm already fired. Fire me. <laughs> You know, that's uh, so WCW shit. Yeah, that that, yeah, yeah that's that's it. Helicopter. right on the dude's face. Yeah, 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 like that. Fire me now. Yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, that's it. While you're at it, fuck <laughs> you, fuck you. You're cool. Yep. Go fuck <laughs> yourself. Word. Fuck you too, man. Word. And, just... and fuck you the most. All all customers. Fuck you guys all the most, man. Y'all Word. niggas are the worst. Word. Go listen to my podcast, you the... sons of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all asking for too much, but don't got the time or the patience to go ahead and deal with your fucking problem. Word. Or, they, or 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 come to an establishment and then tell tell the establishment and the people what your problem is. And then when those people try to tell you what the, the, the solution to your problem, you're like, no, 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 no. See, that's not what I said. What I said was, no, wait, why are you coming here if you know all the answers? Oh, yeah, I love Why is my camera acting like a douchebag? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, GJ. Like, how many, it doesn't how many like USB, me today. How many USBs do you have plugged into your laptop? So, this is the thing. I have, oh. uh, like, pretty much a connector that connects the microphone and uh, my USB camera. Yeah. 
And it's just like pretty much one plug for two. I can put my memory card in there, but I don't have anything else. I just have those two no, plugs. I mean, you should be. And then that's it. And then the only thing that's, that that is wanna here that. is my charger, my charger, and, and then that's it. I, I legit have Amen. nothing, nothing. Yeah, Fuck the show, number one show <laughs> hater in the building. What up, Sonny? Show uh, Sonny always hated Coco Beware, son. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> What's going on, Sonny? Yeah, man. Yo, I don't know where shows that shows missing. He's a no show, He's but probably asleep, bro. Probably. Hopefully, he didn't sleep behind the wheel. Up, you know, some... Yeah, yo. yo, find your shades. Find your shades. Yo, I, your eyes look weird. GG, <laughs> we're watching the movie, and I see show do this. And I'm like, show you. Right? Mm -hmm. He goes, yeah, yeah. I'm watching. I'm watching. He's watching the floor. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's watching. He's watching the floor. He's watching the keyboard. He watched everything. He's He's watching this, oh, the yeah. fucking kicks he got on. Right. The chocolates. My, my man goes, I didn't understand the movie at all. What didn't you understand? And then he explained the whole movie. I was like, yeah. What didn't you understand? <laughs> you just told us the whole fucking movie. But yeah. hey, that, that that show. page for page, bro. Broke oh, yeah. down that thing for page, scene for scene. We're like, what, what were you confused about again? <laughs> What'd you miss? <laughs> But oh my god, it was awesome! It was, I would have awesome. loved to see hear the show talk about the four horsemen tonight. Oh yeah, yeah. you know I don't know I don't know if they rode horses. <laughs> you you're talking about literally, right? Yeah, Ric Flair had the big black one it, with the white hair. Was it Lita in that? Lita? The four horsemen. Okay. Yeah, Lita and Ronda Rousey. They they made their mm -hmm. own faction in the eighties. Yeah, they're, they're the originators. <laughs> yeah. Come back and go. Really? <laughs> and they all had Rolexes because that's how you get in. <laughs> that's the membership code. Rolex. <laughs> yeah. That's funny because every time I think about the Four Horsemen, I think about Evolution and I go, wow. Batista and, and Orton came out of that shit amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, mostly mm -hmm. Batista, really. And he wasn't even supposed to be the guy. It's because he fucked up Orton so bad. Yeah. Huh? Once again, another guy. Orton, Mike's skills are horrendous. He's yeah, they're not the greatest. Shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. He's like, he's like trying to be Jake the Snake, but not. Oh, you know because I mean? he's a viper. Yeah. <laughs> but Tisa was better on the mic, which is sad. And <laughs> I never thought Triple H was was that good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Here's a quote that uh, like I said, best he made him see him fight. And then letting him fight for him. That's a direct quote from Show. Yeah, that was Show's quote. That was Show's quote. <laughs> you, you that shit? Oh, you poor friend. We watched that the movie friend. and we're like, I have no idea what that means. And apparently someone took Japanese in the Matrix. That was that was one of the shorts I made because I don't know what the fuck he was trying to say. They didn't even take Japanese in the Matrix. <laughs> That, that was a quote. <laughs> yeah, what that was, was that was in everything was the matrix. Yeah. Just because Keanu's uh, in it, it's the matrix. I'm like, dude, no, it's not the matrix. Fuck this shit, man. It's fucking camera. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, camera. Gay motherfucking shit. At least the microphone still fucking works. I love his anger. Fuck Yo, like that's a perfect reenactment of me and Kenny watching Raw. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So that's how we watch Raw. The same level of frustration is perfect. Yeah. Now, ready? Now, I so I removed my little USB shit that I had here from my mouse because I never take it out of, off my laptop. Like, you know, it's just there. It's, it's, it's permanently there, but not now because I had to take it off. And now... My USB camera is on its own separate port. It's not connected to no other shit. And if it keeps acting up, it's this fucking stupid app. It's it's Ninja. Ninja wants me to be a ninja and not be seen on the podcast because it's just 
It's shitty today. <laughs> We're shittier than Word. any other fucking day that we've done this podcast. Word. And I'm stuck on frozen. Why is my face like that? And my camera cut off again. Yo. <laughs> this is unbelievable. The camera oh. has feelings, Gigi. The camera has oh, feelings. I'm, I'm hurt. I am physically hurt right now Yo, the camera it literally... hurts me to laugh and and my camera's just doing me dirty on so many levels like i'm i switched you i switched you to your own point it's steve steve yeah, is doing this steve. to me fucking, fucking steve. steve fuck you steve <laughs> fuck you to the 10th power fuck you man <laughs> fuck steve it's my camera working still this see it's, it shows that my camera is on i'm here yeah yeah he, we see you now <laughs> <laughs> i see the light on my camera that's the craziest thing all right but then it's just then ninja tells me all right so so uh, as i'm online there where you guys i have myself here toes next to me and, and lays like on the video below so I'm looking at my settings, which is covering to uh, Toe's face, which is fine. Um, but it says video source, audio source, and then audio output. Well, my Galaxy headphones are fine. My mic is fine. And then every so often, I see the video source go from USB camera to dis to disable, and it disables me. Like what? <laughs> what? Maybe the resolution. Maybe you have to turn down the resolution. I don't, I don't have any other I don't I don't have any settings for resolution. It's just it it my it is just an input. It says front camera, back camera, USB, and screen share. And we're not doing the screen share or disable video, which it, well, it I, does it on its own. You know when you first come in, you put your the, the web camera, you can change like the resolution to have like max balance performance and shit like that. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Or it could just be ninja. It could just be it could be me. I don't know. I, I I don't know. At this it's fucking show's fault, to be honest with you. But I'll take the blame for it because he's not here. <laughs> that motherfucker. Oh my god. Fuck that. Show's fault completely. <laughs> Yo, for real. See, right now my shit my video star says disable video. And I'm here with you guys still. Like I don't understand. I, I'm eventually going to black out. And, and I don't mean by drinking. <laughs> this is just... <laughs> for once, I don't mean that's, drinking that's, when I'm blacking out ever, this time. I haven't heard the pool either. Mm -hmm. That was like... Oh, oh man. Do yeah, I know you're, you're probably on meds, I know. <laughs> Unless you want to Jeff Hardy this. Yo, no, I'm not going to Jeff Hardy, y'all. Oh, damn, that's too soon, Lay. That's too soon. <laughs> it's the seventh damn. time he did it. No, 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 no. That's right, that's right. I made him do that shit. Yeah, it's too soon. It's too soon. It's not too soon. He was roll, running, just like, roll was out and just go home. Like, roll he's out fine. and just go home. <laughs> I'm gonna go home to his mansion. He's fine. Yeah. Oh man. Get some oxy's going. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Oh man. That's... And okay. there I go. And <laughs> there <laughs> I go. <laughs> Fucking Jeff, why are you doing this? <laughs> Fucking Steve and Jeff. Said. Fucking Steve and Jeff, man. <laughs> By the way, when That's Seamus it. did this, I was dying because you can tell he has no coordination. <laughs> None. You, you can tell that boy like, white, white, white. Oh, yes. <laughs> no this is the whitest thing I've ever seen, bro. And I'm not talking about Seamus as in, as in general. I'm talking about oh, man. the little rhythm that Jeff has. Seamus has none of it. Yeah. You, know you could tell Lita and, told him how to do that shit and took her like days. Mm -hmm. You can tell that Jeff did got that shit, like he he can do that shit at a rave and it'll go with the horrible music he can't catch the beat to. But yeah. Seamus, you know, I was like, "What are you?" Do? <laughs> I appreciate it, but that was horrendous, bro. And then he broke his nose again. Yeah, that's what happened. Oh man, he off the mask. Do it again. His nose made out of fucking glass. <laughs> Jesus Christ, son. What was it that was he wrestling Ricochet when they first broke it or Alberto Del Rio for the 7,000th time? Umberto Del Rio, the first time he broke Umberto it. Umberto Del Rio. I think he form, broke it the right? second time. Yeah. And they think he broke it the second time with Ricochet. 
So what I'm understanding is stop wrestling those two guys. Yeah. Or at least uh, uh, Umberto, because, yo, that was 27,000 times. And it's funny. It was it was a, a championship contenders match. Yeah. I don't know how much, I don't know how much Toe loves those. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Not a tournament. Just face the champion. If you beat him, you get a shot. I go, well, just give him a shot now. Yeah, right. You big, miss, yeah, Mr. Middle, big balls. <laughs> Mr. Big Balls. Damn, Gigi's just Look. straight up said, fuck this amount. But we can hear her, though. It's crazy. Yo. Like, when she talks, I'll be like, yo, she's still here, like, in spirit, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and for the rest of the podcast, I said, fuck Del Rio. Word. Um. So, yo, what are the matches for day one so far? Uh, Triple threat match. Uh. Kevin Owens, Big E, and, and uh, Rollins so far. It might be a four-way because Bobby Lashley all of a sudden. Oh, yeah, true, true. He decided to spear somebody. Um, mm-hmm. Brock Lesnar is the number one contender against Roman Reigns because Liv Morgan lost. Yeah, because a, a Brock Lesnar, because clearly he deserves to be the number one contender. Yeah, he convinced. Liv Morgan? No, what? Because Liv Morgan lost. Brock Lesnar is the number one contender for the Universal Championship. Like the Kenny Omega thing. Yeah. And uh <laughs> um, and then and then the Usos versus the New Day again. Yes, yes. Again. For the first time in 2022. Exactly. Yeah. But for the 700th time in WWE. Yeah. And the fourth hundred time for the blue belts. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it's gonna be a great match. Oh, that was gonna steal know, the show. They they're gonna yeah, yeah, they're gonna be awesome. And then we're gonna have uh, Roman wrestled like a bitch versus Brock because he's a bitch when Brock's around. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the the red the red straps don't have a match yet, right? They're not yet. No, I don't think so. No, I, they'll I, probably face the dirty heels. Probably. No, no, no. They they have to face the winner of uh, Rey Mysterio and the Street Profits. Remember, oh, they, remember, they had they have a tournament. They have a tournament going for the. That's the right. Track, they had a yeah. tournament with four teams. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Which is not a tournament. No, it's it's just two matches. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And so uh, is, is this for day one? one yes. Yeah, yeah. This is for day one. This is the line. This for, for day one. one? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, Remember, this is no, I... December. Gigi, I wanted to get your opinion on this. Do you think that Liv Morgan deserves a rematch? Um, I do, just because. The way Becky lately has been winning dirty, I guess, you know, she and it sucks because you don't need Becky Lynch to be a dirty winner in order for her to actually win matches. She can actually win matches on her own, but they want to play up this heel factor, you know, that, uh, you know, Liv is a baby face and, you know, because you can't really sell Liv Morgan as a villain, you can. How there goes my fucking face again. <laughs> what the fuck? Yo, you know what's the crazy no, thing? No, no. Let me tell you something. I fucking completely logged out, came back, changed the resolution to smooth and cool because that's what they had there. Okay, smooth and cool. <laughs> All right. Did they have it with the face? Smooth and cool. Smooth and cool. That's it. You know, <laughs> apparently not because this shit is not smooth and cool. It's anything <laughs> but this fucking I'm um, um this is the most botchiest fucking podcast <laughs> that we've done together. Yo, this and is where I'm in and out like what the fuck? Like he's like I became John Cena. Now you see me, now you don't. Now you see me, now you don't. Like Skype it's all ridiculous. over again. <laughs> oh my god! Um, this is Gigi's Royal Rumble match where she goes away for three hours and comes back and wins it. Like Yo, Rumble. for real, Some Roman Stone Cold shit. Yo, I. You know what the thing is? I honestly thought that Liv Morgan was going to take the strap on Monday. Oh, I would have. I think I would have been okay with that. I. I. There goes my fucking camera again. I saw the camera. I saw the light. I saw the light. <laughs> I saw the light. Oh, maybe so you, light. Oh, wait, your, your light turns on and off. Like the camera. Yeah, it tells me because I have uh, my. So when I'm looking at my camera, I have the lens, obviously, in the middle. Yeah. On my right hand side. 
uh, there's a red light basically lets me know it's whether it's on or off. It's completely off right now. And now it turned on. And then I also have a green button that basically uh, that just lights up, just lets me know that, hey, you guys can see me. It works. But once that green button goes off, like it just did right now, I go into freeze frame. I black out for a moment. And then do I magically come back on? Survey says, nope, my, nope. No, these niggas don't want me back on. They just don't want me to be great. That's fine. <laughs> Ninja doesn't want me to be great. That's fine. That's cool. That's good. That's good. It's, I froze again. Yo, it's, look it's, at this shit. What the? Look at the fucking face I had. <laughs> Yo, that's you it. Like this the podcast girl. is officially the <laughs> amount of faces I had. Fucking even pro wrestling podcast was fucking saying, "Yo." Gigi's camera. Fuck Gigi's camera. I agree. <laughs> and watch it black out one more time. Just for you, pro. Yo, you turn Just it, for you. It's going to black out. You turn into the Miz girl with that face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Disgusting. What is going on? Smooth and cool turns to rough and tough. Man, Word. fuck you, bro. Now I know it does. You know oh what? God. We're just going to use the regular fucking that's it the fun camera that's it that's it it's gonna I'm, I'm gonna look so look how cloudy i look look it's at the bro. difference bro. Bro. it doesn't look, it doesn't bro. look that bad it doesn't you look that bad gg to be honest you with light you. up and you're like it doesn't look cloudy when you light up so it doesn't matter yeah it doesn't look you that bad gg yeah. damn but now we got the races going <laughs> <laughs> that was that was my block for sure. Um, there you go. I don't look like I'm, my head's all up up there. What were we talking about? Yo, if this the, shit disables on me this time, yeah. I'm fucking uh, done. Uh, it, yo, if, it, the title shot. if it works, the title shot. if your camera works, then it, your webcam got to be fucked up. I think it has to be because this shit just started shit acting up. Word. Steve don't like me no more. <laughs> Word. Yeah, so we um, talking about Liv Morgan getting another title shot. Yeah, no, let her get another title. I honestly thought she was going to, you know, take it for the win. I think it would have been good for the company to go ahead and down, down that route. If she would have lost that day one, I would have expected it, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't see her. I see her winning the title. I don't see her having a long title reign. Yeah. I see her. I see her as... They, they should have painted her as the female one, two, three kit, in all honesty, if you want to tie back into our conversation. Because let her get the win. One, two, three. That's it. Liv Morgan. Oh, oh, it's it, it, it's 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 a fluke. It's a this. It's a that. Have her win a couple of times on Raw. And then at the big event, have her lose. Yeah. That that's what I you was know, saying. I, I don't see why they, they shouldn't have built her like that. But at the same time, they, they just don't know what to do with their roster they don't know what to do what they don't fucking know what to do at all period you know yeah. it is it, it's, it's sad to see what wwe looked like five years ago six years ago compared to what they look like now yeah they were a little bit trash but they were tolerable and they did give us a lot of great moments now they're giving us a lot of frustrating moments whereas like as fans we're just like no, nah. I'm not. An, yeah. I I don't feel invested enough for me to care about everyone on the roster. Whereas to AEW makes me want to care about everyone on the roster. There's a difference. You can showcase all these people. Yep. Um, you can put them to jobbers. You can, you know, whatever the case may be. But like, give me something. Like it, I, I was somebody uh, on IG was actually asking how would you book uh, Zia Lin? because she's you know what I hate that shit when they consistently promoting them coming yeah. soon, coming soon. Veer's lost by now. Coming soon, they lost their way yeah. to get to the arena, and they're still coming though. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. Chavo they're on their show. Flights. They're on showtime right now. <laughs> they're gonna get there. It may take them three months, but we gonna get there. Word. I just, 
I think the way they should book her, in all honesty, is they should not book her with jobbers. First and foremost. Don't give me job. Don't don't promote this bitch and then give her jobbers. Word. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I honestly, if you're gonna put her on SmackDown, have her paired with Sonia Deville. Let her be Sonia Deville's bodyguard in a way. And can then you start building a feud between her and Naomi mm -hmm. before you get to Naomi and Sonia Deville. Continue building that story with Sonia Deville using Zion. You know, like you, it's yeah. not over just yet. I think it, that would be a better booking for her than than just putting her in a random ass match with Natalia. Because you know that's what they're gonna do. <clears throat> yeah, if it's not Natalia's Tamina, <laughs> there's nobody meaner than Tamina. No, but apparently, me nobody. <laughs> It's to me, they can't fight. Apparently, yeah, she, she could fight, she could fight, but she's gonna lose eventually because that's how they book her, yeah. And now, now what you got her doing now, you got Tamina running around for the 24 7 champion at the Dana Brooke when her and, and Natalia actually had a legit tag team. I, I like that tag team. Between Natalia and Tamina. Yeah. Problem is, though, it's like you have chemistry in, in the back of the house, but when it comes to performing, yeah, I don't have that chemistry. Nah. And it looked like they had a little bit. They looked like they were working on it. And, and, and just when you thought, maybe this can work, y'all got to go. Fight. Yep. Mm -hmm. giving, they're giving the titles for no reason. Yeah, well, Natalia got hurt. So, you know, they would have lost that title a, lo a lot faster if she didn't get hurt. She didn't, True. you know. But no, yeah, it, it's, it's in all honesty, they gave those titles to her because, like, we, we have champions. We have ta uh, tag team champions, and we need people to hold the belts. Uh -huh. And, you know, they, they fucked up when they gave it to Rhea Ripley because somebody stole that shit from her. Wait a minute, who has the titles mm -hmm. now? Uh, the Queen's Crown, Zelina Vega, and, um, and Carmella. And Carmella. Well, another team that doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> and that sucks because I really like Zelina Vega. I think they need to give her more mic time because oh, yeah. that's and they need to give her more mic time and less mic time to Camilla. Uh, I mean, uh, Carmella. 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 <laughs> you turned mad Spanish on us. To Camila. I really did. <laughs> Camila. Um, Camila. Camila in the ring now. She gotta <laughs> stop talking. <laughs> I can't stand her screaming. I, I think that irritates me the most. I can't. I can't believe it. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. I would rather that scream <laughs> than, than uh, Natalia scream that. Oh. I hate yeah. that shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's <just> like, <laughs> oh, stop trying man. to scream like a man. Just fucking... <laughs> she got a strong. She <laughs> she got a strong tone on her. Word. <laughs> <It's> like, <yeah. laughs> she got the thunder like, cats fucking. You scream. Turn around and look at her like, yo, you play bass. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shit. <laughs> she was an alternate for boys the men. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tamina when she screams, she is like. Her bitch is like way up there. Like, whoa, you you sound like a mouse. That doesn't sound intimidating to me. If you put <laughs> if you put Tamina's voice sounding like a mouse on Natalia, and then <laughs> Natalia's voice on Tamina, I would believe that. Okay. That's believable to me. One hundred percent. I can definitely. That's see like that. when Brock screamed, and we saw him scream. We were like. Don't what? Don't do that again. <laughs> what was that? Why are you screaming like a girl? I'm like, I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo, Brock, give me the mic. Give me the mic. Thank you. Yo, I don't ever want you to touch this again. You did, have been banned. Word, you've been banned from the mic. He did some good work with Sami Zayn on Friday. That's because of Sami Zayn. That is that is true. So, let's 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 respect Sammy because he really was like, yo, I'm gonna carry you the whole way. Just follow my lead. 
Uh, you went to college. You can at least do that. Yeah, right. Oh my god, I'm yeah. looking at the comments from pro wrestling. That shit had me yeah, dying. The highlights of your camera. My highlights of my camera. Yes. Oh, but don't worry, we're gonna get a video Yo. of all my freeze frame <laughs> faces <laughs> throughout this podcast. Because that shit I've never experienced this, this many glitches. This probably is my camera. Probably. Now I got the I just bought this. I probably dropped it. Well, no, where you got that from? The camera. I don't know. Amazon. Oh, buy everything on Amazon. Do you, do you hit them up. Like, yo, the camera died on me. I need a. I need a refund. It <laughs> did, and I'm gonna take the tape off it because you know I stretched out the little, the little slider. Looks a little. <laughs> I had to put tape around it. <laughs> what? Leave me alone. <laughs> this is a little act of life. And then she wonders why it doesn't things. work. Yo, that. Listen. That had nothing to do with any of the falls. <laughs> it just, it's I don't a, know how that happened. It's a webcam <laughs> and a wiffle ball. <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's, it's multi-purpose. <laughs> yes. Not my fault. So the, <laughs> it's not stream, my fault. Tonight's stream was titled NWO versus DX, but we really got internet versus toe tags and webcam versus Gigi. <laughs> Usually Lay's the one with the problems, but today Lay was good. Lay was chilling. Yeah. Money. <laughs> he got the cabinets behind him. <laughs> that was money that was like, yeah. no, it's, it's, it must be the kitchen and the cabinets. Yeah, that's what it is. It nice cabinets, be, nice be. single. <laughs> huh? Right into the window, too. So that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Yo. What it was crazy, the fact that y'all heard the cars racing outside and my windows are closed like i'm look like there's my windows are completely closed <laughs> that's some shit right there i just like looked at the windows like wait a minute them windows is closed i don't feel a breeze i don't feel nothing <laughs> damn them fucking cars are pretty loud hell yeah <laughs> your pro wrestler said i use a canopy to hold up my phone door and shows don't feel bad <laughs> hey man you gotta do what you gotta do See, but yo, put tape around it. It's good. <laughs> Word. <laughs> uh, yo, so we had enough abuse for tonight. <laughs> We're gonna call it a night. Yo, real quick, who you guys got? All of us NWO. Yep, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, for sure. Hey, yo, you, for life, baby. That's it. Oh, life. That's it. And on that note, everybody, appreciate y'all stopping by. The winners of tonight. Our toe tags and GG. We fucked up the internet and the webcam. <laughs> Lay's undefeated, and that's undisputed. Lay's undefeated. <laughs> Bye. Oh. Yo, no. Pro Wrestling Podcast got quote of the night. NWO stands for nothing works on here. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Word. And on that note, it's your friendly neighborhood knucklehead signing out. And uh, if show pops on after we get off, I'll let you know. I'll tweet it. Peace, everybody. Night, y'all. Night. Should I press that button when I said that show? All right, there you go. There you go. <laughs> it's fucking Yo. button, son. Me and this button going to have to fight. It's been that kind of night. It's been that kind of night. Bro. Word. Watch, he, watch as he does that one night, and he's still talking, and it completely like shuts off, and then we're all like, oh. So <laughs> Nobody else can say goodbye. Nobody, nobody else says anything. Yeah, we're just pieces of coming, shit, right? right? <laughs> word. I'm up. Nosotros solamente come mierda aquí. That's it. We just gonna eat shit over here, right? It, it, it be like that sometimes. <laughs> Yo, that's.